Hello, everyone. Welcome to Disventure Dispatch, episode 10. I just tangled my wires, but that's okay. Uh, we are joined by um, most of the hosts. Um, one of us could not make it, but let's introduce us off one by one. We also have a very special guest to introduce as well. I ran out of breath. All right. <laughs> let's first start off with uh, someone who's muted. Hi, Emer. Oh, uh, hello. Um Hi, everyone. I'm back again. You're going to see me for 10 episodes in a row, but I've been mm -hmm. consistent, and I've been ha having a decent day, like, overall, and I'm excited to talk about this episode. It's so much, like, stuff to talk about. Listen, in my defense, during the DC2 retrospective, I was thanos out of existence, all right? That's yeah. No, <laughs> you were, like, you had the, the take another thing, like, you were kind of not part of the contract for this one, but maybe we'll see more of Genesis soon, like, had, like, a whole, like, Materialist video edit dedicated to you because you edited it and like you're like the host there, so that's pretty awesome. But thank you, we'll thank you. See more of you though. <laughs> All right, uh, but now we move on to someone who I think has also been in every podcast yeah. so far. Uh, might not be, but I I'll have to double check that. Hi, Tam. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, Tan's been in every oh, one of them. Like, we tied the record for 10 so far. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. We're going to see oh, who gosh. makes it the full <gasps> way. Who's going to break first? Oh, my God. I'm actually excited for that. <laughs> hello, funny, like, hello. Race. Yeah. Hello. I was Welcome here back to the podcast, Tan. Hi. Thank you so much. I just literally watched the episode. So. <laughs> <laughs> We're so professional here. Trust. Yeah. Totally. For real. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm hyped. I'm, I'm... <laughs> you're all ready to go. I can tell. You're all psyched. You're all good. I mean, at the yeah. very least, you have um, you got the recency. You got the power of recency here, right? Yeah, and you've seen the scripts. Like you have like two times of like no, like you have like that knowledge. Well, yes. okay, the scripts have left her mind. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was gonna say like, the, scripts, like, the scripts are gone. Like Dude, <laughs> that's, that's gone like the wind. Oh my god! Basically, otherwise, <laughs> I am so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right, let's introduce our um, final host of the night before you know we move at, or so that we can bring him out of muting purgatory. <laughs> Say hello I'm to JPEG this, back once again. Hello. So uh, Jared just typed, I'm going to be releasing the last, uh, the finale script in a few hours. So it's awesome. We're going to see it soon. Oh, <laughs> it God. might happen during the podcast. Oh, nice. Congrats. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's awesome. I'm Whoa. so happy Whoa. that Apex. he told yeah. all of us the winner. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so happy to hear about the winner too. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh my god, Oliver won! What? Oh wait, crap! I'm not muted. <laughs> uh, All right. Yeah. So now we have like one more thing. Genesis, pull it off. Like, okay. Oliver. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Hang on. All right. Uh, I'm gonna try and drum roll this. Introducing our guest for episode five. It's Jmo. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Hello. I am the voice. I am Hunter from Disventure Can. And that's all that's all I'm doing with the voice, man. I, I really can't do this, guys. It's, uh, okay. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, yes, I, I'm back to normal mode now. Um, this is actually, uh, yeah, this is very strange. This is, um, okay, okay, ba okay, but being, being real though, I was like, how am I going to start this? Um, but yes, this is my, this is indeed my voice. I'm not. I'm not doing this voice, and Hunter is the the real um, thing. No, this is my voice. You might not have heard oh, of you, Jamie. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Things you might do, like to get people interested. We're all. Curious. All right, here's something that you might not know about me, and that's that I'm Australian. Um, <laughs> yeah, no way. I, uh, yeah, uh, I live in Australia, and um, I I mean, I guess I can talk about how I got on this venture camp in the first place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, we'd love to hear uh, that. I don't know how interesting that is, because um, <laughs> it would. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Total Drama is a big, uh, is, is a big thing for me, and it's a pretty cool opportunity, I suppose. Um, Do you hear about Disventure Camp first of all, and what prompted you to audition for it? And were there any other characters that you were really excited to hopefully get, or was it specifically just Hunter, or did you even? Did you even ever think you were going to get Hunter, you know? 
Um, essentially, I wouldn't know that this venture camp existed if I hadn't uh, been a big fan of Total Drama ever since I was a kid. And specifically, I um, didn't get big on the, the Total Drama subreddit, because um, the Total Drama subreddit is um, quite a place. And one day I saw a post and it was like, uh, we're looking for English voice actors for the um, for this uh, Total Drama fan project. I was like, all right. I'd known about a few fan projects, notably like Reunion, I guess. Um, that one was uh, somewhat of a big deal. But I looked into it and I was like, oh yeah, I've, I think I've seen something about this one. Adventure Camp. And it's all in Spanish and... Um, there's a bunch of like fully animated episodes on YouTube. That's pretty cool. And now that they, uh, they've uh, they got they got some nice character designs out. They've released the character designs for the um, new Disventure Camp, which is going to be in English and Spanish. So yeah, I'll I might as well put myself out there. You know, um, send in an audition. I have voice recording equipment. Um, I've always wanted to. You know, be a voice actor. I've always respected uh, the voice actors on the Canadian animated shows, the yeah. uh, the ones that I grew up with, like Total Drama. Um, you know, big fan of them. Right. Um, and so I was like, you know, let's let's go for this. Could be a really good opportunity, and it was, as it turns out, it was amazing. And so I, uh, so I was like, yep, this sounds great. Uh, as I guess there's a bit of a thing is that um, I'm Australian and. Uh, they're probably going to want uh, kind of Canadian or American uh, uh, voices because Total Drama is set in Canada and I'm assuming that it's going to be in the style of Total Drama. So I was like, you know, this could be a good opportunity for me to, to learn an American accent and try it for the first time, really. And so I, uh, wow. I, I did that and um, I submitted my application um i auditioned for two characters in dc2 um i auditioned for hunter obviously but also kai um which i obviously oh. did not get oh. because um but i just did like a, a really well actually for both of them i did my both my normal voice i read the lines of my normal voice but i also attempted an american accent and uh it was not amazing, but um, Jared and Robert got back to me and they were like, hey, we'd like you to voice a character. Um, so I was like, awesome. And they were like, uh, we want you to voice Hunter and we're going to get it all sorted. We're working on the animation with the Spanish voice actors. And I was like, awesome, okay. Because Hunter was mm -hmm. the one um, who I thought my voice would suit the most. Um, uh huh. And then. I definitely agree with that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, um, and like the the just the little description and everything. I was like, he seems like a a cool character who I'll you know be able to kind of level with. Um, and mm -hmm. so, uh, obviously, with the first episode, um, they didn't have the budget to change the, the lip animation, so they could only do one like mouth animation, and so they did it to the all the Spanish voice actors audio. So what they sent me was. Um, the, all the hunter scenes from episode one in Spanish, and they're like, "Hey, can you like voice over? Um, can you record your lines over this animation and try to make um, your delivery match the lip movements uh, from the the Spanish uh, from the Spanish animation?" Which was challenging, admittedly, because um, yeah, in, in Spanish, generally, generally, it takes well. longer to say okay. things. Um, right, or just like. Uh, and it and so it did not it didn't match perfectly um i remember there was even a line that i had to change in episode one um where hunter's like he's a, he helps in the boat and then he's like i don't really know how to drive this but i'll try that was his like first uh thing that he says and then um but the thing is uh in in spanish i'll try was much longer and so they're like, you got to try and make it uh, match. And if it doesn't, then we got to stretch out the I'll try. And um, it, it, the audio sounds like a robot or something. And so I was like, oh, I don't want that. Um, so then I changed the lines. Of, I'll give it a go. And then that ended up in the episode. Because um, it means the same thing, but it works. And so I was adaptable uh, at that stage. <laughs> and yeah. 
and episode one came out and i was like okay i can kind of see why i, I got the role now um right because <laughs> mm-hmm. there, there was quite a few english voice act that there was um you know uh um a few of the spanish voice actors carrying over obviously they didn't have a big english audience at that point um but that episode was a the episode one and it was a real turning point um and from that point on uh it's kind of history uh, they yeah they just kept growing since then so that was my uh, mm-hmm. was my starting point uh I basically think that's amazing <laughs> Yeah, I can actually play my. I have here my first ever attempt at voicing Hunter, which was because oh, yeah. uh, they actually <laughs> they sent they sent the um they were like hey can you read these lines and it's Hunter saying his first line like hey um seems like no one wants to run by our side but the set the set the phrase seems like no one wants to run by our side uh, specifically run by our side is one of the hardest things to say in an American accent if you're not American I honestly still can't do it. And so my very first line as Hunter, um, it just sounds really skewed because I'm like, guess no one wants to run by our side. <laughs> um, and so I was like, oh, that's quite a first impression. <laughs> um, what if, what if but you yeah, know, but no my wants to jog simultaneously was... with us? <laughs> just completely oh my goodness. I don't know. That would work, yeah. I don't think I was, I don't think I was prepared to change the lines that drastically. Um, maybe mm-hmm. maybe Hunter would be like entirely different if I'd done that. Maybe everyone would yeah, see it completely like... differently. That's the first line. <laughs> Wait, have I got this here? Yeah, this is the uh, the American delivery. I'll just play it. I'll see if you guys can hear this. Okay, editor see, JPEG, no you know what to do. To run by our side. <laughs> so that's Hunter oh, saying oh. the first line. It definitely Aww. sounds very is... different. I like yeah. it. I Not will say I definitely. Like I just prefer to invest my time in things that I'm really passionate about. I, I, I did not have the accent by that one, bro. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's got better. I feel like it's gotten better. Oh, it's gotten, it's gotten, I like, really, really like, good. Um, like... It's gotten really good. Yeah. Stra- yeah, I'm I wanted really to, it to not be distracting. That was my, my goal, basically. Yeah. Um, mm. I, I, I felt like I... It was good because I felt like I created a voice and, like, a character. Like, Hunter, he talks very high. He starts his sentences very high-pitched. <laughs> um, and that's kind of a quirk of his. <laughs> Yeah. He's like, Ali, what do you think we're going to do in this situation? Um, <laughs> because that kind of reflects his naivete um, that he was originally, that he originally had, um, I suppose. Right. Um, he, uh, yeah, I read him as like, you know, quite a um, timid guy um, he, who was quite uh, isolated, I guess, and didn't really, you know, hang out with people. And so... In Dispatch, obviously, he looks at, in episode one, he's looking at it quite strategically, and so I was, you know, playing with that. But, you know, trying to deliver a voice that the fans would like at the same time, because um, people like Hunter's design and everything. So, Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and I really like, and it's been so great for, like, developing um, an American accent and everything. I just wanted it to, you know, um, you know, uh, work. And I, and it, it, yeah, I I really appreciate all the comments that I get and stuff. Uh, people saying that um, they like Hunter's voice and that they like my performance. I I really appreciate all of that. Um, and yeah, when it comes to like, uh, I think it was episode three of Dispenser Camp. I was like, yeah, I got stuff to work with here. This is cool. I got like a, it's got like a bunch of scenes, and he's got like a uh, an emotional uh, scene or whatever. And I. You, because I actually do want to be a voice actor, I, I really do. Um, I I try with those scenes, you know. Like I, I I feel like when I do things, I the if there's no reason um to not try my best, then I'll just I'll just put effort into it, regardless of like what the project is. And like I want right. Hunter to be, you know, I want I want those scenes to, um, I want to sell those scenes. Uh, partially because, um, obviously, uh, Hunter, in the early part of DC2, comes across as quite mysterious, and it's like, oh, does he have ulterior motives? Is he evil, or whatever? Um, and I was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a good theory. Um, but I felt like he was being genuine with a lot of stuff. Like, obviously, he's being genuine when he talks about uh, his mum's depression, and, um, and like, at the end of the season, when he talks about how much Tess and Ali are good friends to him, um... 
I kind of, I wanted that to be genuine because I felt like Hunter's so much more interesting of a character that way. And I felt like that was the intention for him. And so mm -hmm. with those scenes, I really tried to sell the emotion of it. And so, yeah, think... yeah, you know, I'm, I'm trying for those parts and, mm -hmm. and it's a great challenge. I, I love doing it, you know? Yeah, no, I think it really worked. Um, I mean, back, back when I, when I was, um, Back when I was just watching Disventure Camp for fun, um, when um, now you watch, you know, as season two was for sport. That's what we're calling. Oh my! Uh, <laughs> uh, back when you know, um, back when I was just watching it for fun, I um, I would see or well, I would see scenes like yeah, the the whole depression or the scene where Hunter's talking about his mom's depression, and I think you really sold sold it at least to me. I had some tears mm -hmm. in my eyes. Um, yeah, I totally agree with you, yeah. Genesis. Because like, I was, I was like always like astounded. I heard I'm like, oh wait, uh, Jamo's Australian. Um, because like your accent, like even though like sometimes like it limits certain lines, I think you're able like to maintain voice to make people not think that. Uh, due to how you you go about your deliveries, and I do want to commend you there and respect you regarding all like the complicated stuff. Because Hunter goes for a lot this season. Yeah, in ways he expresses mm -hmm. his thoughts. So it's very interesting that talk about how your process of like getting that accent down is like very remarkable to see mm -hmm. and also i'm gonna be oh. fully honest i did not know you were australian until like maybe like three days ago <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> wow. yeah, yeah. so the fact that you sold Shocking. me on that um yeah yeah it's very multi-layered yeah to just not not only just play a character but also play like a different accent than your normal one it's like you're doing like more work than everyone else <laughs> Like, let's say, mm -hmm. you know, Vyster or myself are just kind of doing our normal accents, right? <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. I think you do a fantastic job with that. To the point where I'm pretty sure a casual audience wouldn't be able to tell. At yeah. least, no. I didn't. I, I'm not, not at all. Yeah, it's not like... Uh, I'm not good at Benedict accents, Cumberbatch but, you know, Yeah, I've strange. had that quite a yeah. Where it's like, Dormammu, oh, I've come yeah, to yeah, bargain. Yeah, that's, um... no, it's like genuinely like hard to tell. Mm. It's great. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that was that was really my kind of uh, intention, and I learned a lot, you know. And just doing it like in that high range, I think helps as well. Because if I'm talking in my normal uh, voice, like my normal range, trying to do an American accent, it probably wouldn't be as convincing. I found with that, um, it's way easier. And I I I chose I chose the accent quite quite quickly i was like i'm just gonna do a really simple like californian almost like um <laughs> hey or whatever i don't know mm -hmm. um That's a... yeah uh, but like sometimes the sometimes some lines come out as like a bit like southern or whatever but i'd <laughs> rather that like whenever i come to like something harder i'd rather go into some kind of like regional american thing than uh the than like come, come back to like my natural australian because i feel like that's it doesn't break your immersion as much that way mm -hmm. um, yeah totally understandable um oh uh real quick um let's get someone else to ask a different question yeah uh, does anyone I, I, have have, any, like... uh, I have one that doesn't really have to do with disventure okay. camp but some some people on the discord are like genuinely fans of your youtube channel i don't know if you want to talk about this but recently you made a video where you said that you're planning on making uh, producing more content in the future so <laughs> what's uh what's all that about you know i did uh, yes yeah <laughs> That's interesting, yeah, because I really try not to, I really try to keep uh, the Disventure Camp thing separate from my other, like, uh, social media. Um, like, on my YouTube channel, I obviously don't talk about um, Disventure Camp. I try, that's just, like, more my um, my film stuff. Um, and, yeah, and also my Instagram is just for people I know in real life. So, um, I keep that. Oh. If yeah, I, I don't, that's business. why I have a lot of follow requests from DC fans. I'm like, yeah, maybe I should, I, I might start like a, an acting Instagram or, or an acting mm -hmm. social media um, so that I uh, have that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's hard for me to connect uh, a lot of different aspects of my uh, artistic kind of endeavors because I've got quite a few things going on, like my YouTube channel, which I don't mind like this venture camp fans, you know, uh, discovering because I I want to promote that and everything because I'm mm -hmm. um, I'm definitely gonna be working on more videos like I said because um, uh, now I am at the point where I can really start going for 
Um, I, ha- I have the time now and I have the resource and everything to start making the kinds of videos that I've always wanted to make consistently. And so I've got a lot of projects that I've put off for years. Um, and now I'm like, you know, I just got to do them like this year. I'm going to um, plan them out and get them out. And so that'll be pretty cool. Um, but Bye yeah. Ying. <laughs> And at the moment, you are about 15 I... subs away from a thousand, so you can finally get paid as well. <laughs> like I am, yeah, yeah. Let's my go. watch hours are uh, up to the, the 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 standard, but um, when I post some like bigger videos, then I'll uh, get there. I'm actually, I I've actually, I had an idea a while ago to do my first ever reaction series, which will be to the Total Drama reboot, and I'm actually I've filmed oh. reactions to the first two episodes of the Total Drama reboot. Yeah, yeah. Um, awesome. I've been waiting on so that. So those will, yeah, those will be out. Um, uh, I guess I'll share them. But it's a, it's a couple. You know, I'm, I'm obviously very late to that. So. <laughs> that? Yeah, it's all right. Billy's gonna finish his by 2026 at this point. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, uh. Uh, yeah. Well, is he finished like the the 2023 season? Um, yeah. I'm still uh, on like Z and everything. I love Z. Oh, Z's Z's amazing. Z's iconic. That's who Genesis would be. He'd be Z. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I'm okay with that. I'll take it. I was surprised by how good the Total Drama reboot was, I will say, at least the first two episodes. Mm -hmm. Because I was a pretty mid on Total Drama for a while. But those episodes, they had like a a humor that uh, I feel like the rest of the show is really lacking. Um, And just like a, a really consistent energy. I don't know what the consensus is for uh the the reboot in general but uh, i do i i did dig those first two episodes um i think episode one is probably like in my top 10 like total drama episodes or hey. whatever <laughs> genuinely I, I, yeah because I, I think yeah yeah total drama is um yeah um but like this venture camp is just getting you know better and better which is amazing mm-hmm. for sure <laughs> All Stars is really uh... impressive to see how that's going. Yeah. Hmm. Anyone else got another? Like just the way the like scenes it? are constructed and everything. Like, yeah, there's so much more cohesive. Mm-hmm. And... Yeah, it's great. Who is your favorite Total Drama character of all time? This is something I wanted to ask uh, Ooh, uh, like... uh, Scott last <gasps> episode, but I wasn't able to. <laughs> oh, dude. Uh... oh, this is a really good one. See, I've got I've got one, but basically. And this has to do with me being on the Total Drama sub where Reddit, where it's like, oh, you like base your identity around a character or whatever. Um, like uh, I'm the number one <laughs> Sam Stan on the um, on the Total Drama subreddit or whatever, uh, or the number one Cody Stan or something. Um, but uh, and so I was like, man, who can I be the the CEO of? And so, um, <laughs> and I think my my answer to that question because I don't really connect to any of the the total drama characters a lot of people attach themselves to a specific character but i don't really um Mm -hmm. and so i don't know if you guys have seen the the celebrity manhunt episode of total drama it's this episode in between action and world tour it's a Mm -hmm. really good episode it's my favorite episode of total drama just because it really goes for the the mockumentary reality show parody um, oh yeah which is the thing i like about total drama um and it just like it really fills out that premise for the first time. And the, one of the hosts uh, on that episode, he never appears again. I don't know if you guys know Josh. He's one of the hosts yeah. of Celebrity Manhunt. <laughs> you oh had that God. ready. You had that ready. I remember him. He's yeah, my yeah, favorite total ready. drama character. <laughs> How'd you have it so ready? I love every line that Josh says. I love his voice actor. I love that he like instigates basically all of the conflicts in World Tour, and then he never appears in World Tour. Um, yeah, I remember so, that kind of yeah, line with the cat fight yeah. scene. Oh, yeah, if <laughs> I get to say one of my... The moment where all the contestants are about to die, and then um, Chris pulls out the contracts. And mm. he's like, total drama, <laughs> Inc. Wave this all legal responsibility for the sudden and gruesome demise of the contestants. That's, my, <laughs> that's a great yeah. one. Total drama is back! <laughs> the, yeah. drama is bad. Oh, feeling in for I watched I watched one thing uh in preparation for this uh podcast and it was Adventure Camp episode one. Because oh, uh no. I I <laughs> went back and I was like they, that line, the line isn't in the um isn't in it anymore for, the, yeah. for some reason, but I was like, man, this Adventure Camp has come a long way, man. Mm-hmm. From like that the original animation. 
Oh, without oh, a doubt. Jake, you are so annoying, <laughs> Jake. Oh, Lord. I can't believe that was my first English introduction dub? to Dan. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. Mox, who isn't here voicing uh, Nick, uh, was a personal favorite. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And, and, oh. and what's the host name? Jared, Jared. or something? Like the, yeah. the jean jacket guy? Jared yeah. Johnson. Johnson. He, he, that's a great character. <laughs> Jared Johnson. Oh, yeah, this is the... Uh, like the link here for the English dub. <laughs> oh, perfect. Line. Oh, yes, it's been, it's no longer lost media. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I watched the so Spanish stuff. version, right? Because, yeah, yes. yeah, they only have the Spanish one, but this is the English. There's only one episode of the English. And I remember like watching it when it came out. It didn't come out like I thought it went out, but like I made sure to save the link just in case. And now it's always good to have. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, like oh, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Why does Tom look like a Dr. Seuss character? Uh, just, um, know. be sure to say thank you in advance to Emer for the Beta Miriam voice. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, the Beta Miriam was an experience, and I was, like, watching it. It was, like, mm. eight, it was, like, night of time I was watching this, and to go through the season with the Beta Miriam, I just switched to the Spanish. I was like, I can't wait for the English episodes to come out. And they never came but out. I was, like, at night. Yeah, they never did, but at night time, I was just, like, watching the whole season. What is this show? It was, like, it's animated, so I'll watch it. Shout out to Beta Miriam's English voice actor. We miss you. That was a yeah. yeah it's, I think it's someone asked uh, it's Jared are. or Robert about that. I remember they're like, "What's really? up with Beta Miriam?" And someone Robert was just like, "Oh yeah, I just got my friend to do it, <laughs> so it didn't <laughs> oh, come out right." Yeah, and that's actually for Miriam at the time. They had, like no English audience. That's totally fair. you know you got to do what you got to do, right? Right. I don't think I actually saw this before I um, auditioned. For, um, Hunter. Oh, uh... so. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I I saw Adventure Camp after after DC two, like way after DC two. Same. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Adventure Camp is a very druggy experience, you know. <laughs> it is indeed. Like you just gotta not pay attention. Like Dan gets booted after doing like, nothing. Mindlessly. Like, what? What? <laughs> What's going on? I was like, I was like rooting for Miriam to go that episode. I was like. Go home, your voice is uh, an experience. I don't want to. Oh, God. <laughs> if you've only seen this venture camp if you, and you've never seen this, it's going to be like the most cursed thing ever. I know. <laughs> really uh, is. They, this came out in 2021, now it's 2024, and look at the, how much things have grown. It's insane to think in about. Just three wow. years? How? Yeah. Mm. Crazy. Dude. That's amazing. Ellie stole the queen, though. Uh, 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 oh my god. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> Ella with me, guys. Uh, it's, it's the funny thing is, like, Mark's not even here to like defend JPEG. <laughs> For real. Like... What the frick? We jumped. <laughs> All right, so uh, I think we must move on to the uh, guest character at the moment, right, guys? <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I think we should. Mm. Uh, by coincidence, spoiler alert, drum roll, please. He's also the eliminated character of the episode. <laughs> yeah. That is actually a coincidence. Aww. We did not plan that. <laughs> just so happened to fall that way. No, no, it wasn't just in a coincidence. Honestly, how oh, about we about have... Homeboy now. Oh. I was going to say, how about we have Tam do the explanation of Hunter and his arc for this one? Because... Oh, yes. Oh, Me? So yeah, because Emer's already super fan. We, 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 we know he's good at what he does. But you, you're <laughs> like a huge DC2 so... fan, you know? You, oh my god, yeah. especially after seeing Tam's messages about Hunter. Like... Coming from DC2, uh, you know, Hunter is kind of a hard character to gauge, really. Because sometimes the writing for him can be just a little bit inconsistent. <laughs> um, a little. <laughs> said a little. Yeah, um... But, I mean, I still loved him in DC2, and in DC3 now, like, the newest episode really showed um, um, a good, like, dimension for him. And then, like, in terms of his uh, relationships with uh, Tess and Allie, too, um, that's something that we never got to see in DC2, really, because it was only, like, a, a messy love triangle, which um, is hard to explain, really. <laughs> It's very much for hours. Yeah. Um there was a whole arc with like Hunter acting strange and stuff. And it was just like feelings got really confusing. And then Hunter and tried Lone to Ranger for a while. Yeah. 
<laughs> with Lone Ranger. <laughs> yeah, and then he thought like like was even trying to hit on him, and yeah, that was that was a weird moment. <laughs> so he has. His- <laughs> Are th- is this gonna be her final words on the character? Oh, oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! This eulogy is not looking good. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, this- I don't it's blame you. Okay. I am so yeah. sorry, Hunter. I swear I love him. What happens at the end of the season? Yeah, skip the middle part, Tim. <laughs> um, so they, I guess the love triangle makes up, you know? They they clear out the whole, like, miscommunication, I guess. Um, so Hunter's, like, he's naive, but he, he has, like, genuine intentions most of the time. Um, there's stuff with the pills and stuff, but we won't talk about that. So, <laughs> <laughs> moving on. <laughs> to DC three, um, we see that Hunter and Ali are together. Who cheered? Um, <laughs> no one. T- <laughs> no, I- no, I don't think so. <laughs> I like them though. They're they're really good in this season. I think. Um, so we see that like, there's conflict between them, and um, suddenly Ali is starting to value. Um, the audience's opinion about them she's starting to realize like oh they really thought of us as like bland and uninteresting and that's kind of meta too but um yeah and hunter he's (laughs) i definitely felt that but um (laughs) hunter's like hunter's not feeling it at all because like he he loves ali but like he has his faults too though like he won't he won't listen to um Ali's, um, I guess, rambles and stuff. Um, yeah, he's not... I mean, he tries to be a good boyfriend in his own way, but sometimes the miscommunication gets in the way. And, um, yeah, Hunter's been a big proponent of getting Fiore out, too. Um, he's trying to see, like, the big picture for their team, but also, like, um, trying to save him and Ali both. So there's a struggle there that we see between Allie and Hunter. And sadly, in this episode, it comes to a head and Hunter is sadly eliminated. <laughs> His, no. um, yeah. <laughs> so His close struggles. to the end. <laughs> that, that was actually going to be a line that we suggested. We're like, no, we're so close oh to the God. beginning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, that's so, pretty so funny. close to merge. That it. <laughs> Uh, before we continue, I'm going to make so a very quick interjection, just to be very cryptic about it. Uh, but a lot of people have mm-hmm. been saying that um, Hunter's arc is completed in this episode, and it was rushed. And I'm like, mm. it was complete. What, what are you talking about? What do you mean it was complete? We're nowhere near done. <laughs> we are nowhere near done. Yeah. What are you guys talking about? Yeah. No. <laughs> There's some no. 16 episodes left, and there is a comeback challenge, which Jared had stated yeah. on Twitter. So yeah. there's something in the future for Hunter, for sure. Yeah, oh, so I guess this... we can say that Hunter will be in the show again. Okay. Because yeah, I wasn't exactly. sure if I was supposed to say that. Yeah. Well, you're fine. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. It, you're totally it, fine. He says motel episode. I'm back. This is not Hunter's yeah. last appearance. Yeah, he yeah has, it's not his last. At least he, he, four more appearances. Maybe more if he comes back. I don't know. Don't worry. Okay, Hunter, really? Hunter isn't dead. It's, it's left on an ambiguous note, but we will see what happens with them. And, um, yeah. Yeah. That's that's I guess Hunter for now. <laughs> it's gonna be total drama where like in the motel episode in total drama, everyone you know. Oh gosh. Kind of like I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. What happens? Out. Like people just have like two lines or whatever. Every single eliminated character <laughs> yeah. will have at least like ten ish lines, right? So yes, that's awesome to hear. <laughs> They're being taken. Care of. <laughs> just mention about that. Well, all the characters good and all getting good development. Remember how, like, Tess has, like, two lines in episode 13, and everyone's like, this is such a powerful scene for Tess, like, they go for so much. Like, that's only two lines. Imagine what ten-plus lines can do for certain characters, especially with the right end this season, for knowing how to, like, make sure lines have some... It's gonna be very much fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, for, for sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hunter has a lot of great scenes in this episode, in my opinion. I think... This was really his episode, for real. Yeah. Hunter was yeah. a star. Yeah, definitely episode. the most lines in this episode. Yeah. A fitting way to go. <laughs> Why did I Oh do my that? god, the accent. <laughs> <laughs> this episode, to me, feel, felt like a parallel to DC2 episode 3, where Hunter also got a lot of lines, if you guys remember. 
Yeah, yeah. Because um, basically, um, there is a parallel where, obviously, like, there's two scenes in the entire show where Hunter talks to Tess, um, and both of them are, like, alone, I guess. And both of them are emotional conversations about something. But in DC2 Episode 3, um, the context is a bit different because, like, Tess is sad, and then Hunter's just, like... Uh, Hunter is the one who, like, says... Um, who they like gives the monologue or whatever. He's the one who um, uh, says like, you know, I'm gonna be by your side. He, he, uh, basically, um, and Tess doesn't really have uh, like too much um, of a stake in that. Whereas it, when you look at the the scene in this episode, it's much more interesting because Alan, no, Hunter is the one who is kind of emotionally not in a great place because of Ali. And Tess notices that. Um, but Tess has way more of a stake in the, the conversation. And it, it, it is more of a conversation. Because, you know, Tess cares about Ali as well. And she cares about Hunter. She cares about both of them and their relationship and how their relationship is impacting both of them um, as individuals. And so... Tess has much more kind of agency in this scene, uh, I feel like. Mm -hmm. and, I yeah. definitely agree with you there. I mm -hmm. just love how that scene, remember, like, during their mid-20s, and we really get to see that now with the dialogue, to see, like, how, like, more mature they've gotten since their first appearance. I think that's just, like, such a good, like, comparison to show how far these characters have came in their beginning. Yeah, yeah, um, that is yeah. so. Some true. people are like, "Tess uh, solved all their problems with one conversation." I'm like, "Really? Solved? Come on, guys! Come on! <laughs> yeah. Solved? Come on! Oh, oh it's more of a work in progress. <laughs> no one's being done dirty. This yeah, season. right. Come on, guys. <laughs> right. Yeah, we pull the same tricks. <laughs> We're not pulling the same tricks like last. No one's gonna get Maggie or Drew or Dan. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Maggie paid with her into the wayside. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I think Hunter's elimination is pretty fitting. Um, I like the team dynamic that's going on with Jake and Ashley being uh, friends and obviously like confidants and um, Hunter and Ali naturally being together. And that leaving Fiore in the middle and then Fiore's like, man, I gotta act on this. Um, and it comes down to Hunter um, not really being able to work with Fiore. And so um, Fiore is able to get on Jake and Ashley's side and persuade them like... You know, if you don't get rid of Hunter or Ali, one of you is going to have to go home um, because then it's going to be uneven. And so you got to use me to, to get rid of them. And so I think that makes a lot of sense. And I think it's uh, pretty fitting within the, the context of uh, all that. I think, yeah, it was like a fitting, um, I guess, kind of like conclusion to that whole like conflict that they were building up for these past few episodes. Um, so yeah, just yeah, like, I'm pretty sure the Hunter Fiore thing isn't over as well. Yeah, um, Ooh. Ooh. yeah, yeah. you may be wondering, like, why exactly is it a storyline this season that Hunter just has uh, a hatred for Fiore? Um, because it's like it's a pretty, um, it's a pretty consistent thing across the first uh, couple of episodes, and on the surface level, it does make sense, like, Hunter cares about strategy to a certain extent or at the very least he, he wants his team to win so that they're all safe and fiore is kind of sabotaging that because she's not good at challenges and she's working with people from the other teams and so um he's like yeah i, I, don't, I don't like you um yeah but what's interesting about it is that there's a more subtle um explanation as well uh that jpeg kind of shared with me um oh a subtle parallel to oh. DC2. Um, because essentially there's an episode in DC2 where um, it's revealed that Ali is a gamer and she's and she was gaming with uh, kids and she made them cry because um, they were using hacks. <laughs> um, yeah. And so the writers thought um, it would be very funny and ironic if Hunter comes on to... Dispensure Camp All Stars, and then immediately starts beefing with the child, um, which culminates in the epic line where Ali uh, uh, says, "Like Hunter, what are you doing? You're you're beefing with the child," and uh, <laughs> Hunter's like, "Oh yeah, you're one to judge." 
Oh, it connects. Yeah. I was, I was, gonna I was bring waiting that up. for that reference. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. But... <laughs> Tam was actually the one who suggested that. That's so funny. I'd love that. Yeah, Tam was the one who suggested that. <laughs> I, I know it's still like very like it's it, it's still subtle, but it's like it was supposed to be like even more subtle. It was like no one's gonna pick up on that. We gotta make it a bit more obvious as to what hunters are referring to. <laughs> I respect it. I respect it. Nice job, Tam. Is this too? I think. On that so, comment, yeah. I think that what we've been doing is that we've been highlighting that you know, human beings are just. You know, unintentionally hypocrites at times. You know, <laughs> whether it be Tom right. in the last episode or Ali in this episode, for example. You know, it just, it just happens. You know, it just kind of happens. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I also try to work with stuff from DC too. What is it, what is established? Yeah. 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 So, I guess. So to all the people saying, "Why is Hunter fighting with a kid?" Romance. He was calling people out, and it's like, "Yeah, we it's we were waiting till episode five. That's what the ride. That's this is the writer's explanation. Yes, we were this waiting. is what the, that the, that was what they intended." <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But yeah, Hunter has a lot more to, uh, going on. And I didn't know that, admittedly, while I was voicing him <laughs> in these first five episodes. Um, and his behavior um, is all part of uh, something very interesting that's coming um, in the future. But I was a bit... Uh, it was a bit jarring off the bat that Hunter is uh, so kind of abrasive to everyone. Um, and... Because, it, it, yeah, I guess it doesn't really... Um, it doesn't reflect uh, where he starts out from in DC2, but then again, it's not supposed to, um, as right. you'll realize as the season goes on. Is that mm -hmm. Hunter's, like JPEG says, Hunter's behavior in these episodes, the way he acts, is very intentional and is um, part of something that is going to be explored more later on. Um, and yeah, and in, in the meantime, it was it was fun to, to. It's definitely fun to voice Hunter being angry at people, even if it was a bit jarring, I guess. Um, but yeah, the and also like Hunt Hunt Alley in general, um, you might not expect that in between seasons. You know, it would be like, oh, now Hunter and Alley got into a relationship between seasons. That's interesting. Um, might not yeah. have expected that, and. Um, uh, straight away, it doesn't seem like they're on a great uh, footing with the relationship, but yeah. Um, but there are. But w what uh, the show is building towards is going to be uh, has a lot of potential, I think, and is going to be really good. Uh, so yeah, look out for that. I suppose. Stay <laughs> tuned for more yeah. Dispatcher Camp episodes for Good Hunter Direction. Yeah, for context, I, I don't know how far yeah. the voice actors, how many scripts they have, but there's going to be a lot of, I feel like there's going to be a lot of chat in the voice acting, <laughs> the voice acting Discord with <laughs> some, uh, some choices we made. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's yeah. lot of clues here and, there, here and there. If you can uh, pick up on all the clues and solve it early, then um, I'll be very impressed. <laughs> yeah, like, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. fans, come on, work with me in Genesis. We'll just, like, figure out all the clues together. <laughs> it's, not just Hunter, chat it's not just Hunter, by the way. It's, like, every character. There's, like, a lot of clues right there. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, you guys are like a crack team in terms of like predictions and everything. Literally, oh, this thank is the you. expert. Thanks so much. Aside from the two yeah. actual writers, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and some of them don't even know what happens in the next episode because they forgot the scripts. Oh, <laughs> not calling anyone out, but like I'm. We're looking at a certain <laughs> Miles Morales up. here. Oh gosh. Oh wait! Oh, the Miles Morales thing. Oh, we shouldn't probably never. Mm. Oh shoot! Wait, wait, oh, I was referring I... to the profile picture. Is there something else? Yeah, going no, on? I was yeah, no, I was thinking about the DNA thing, but that's for another day. Oh. <laughs> I have no idea what you guys are talking about. What are you guys even talking about? Good. Yeah. No, we're not gonna mention it. Anyway, I was gonna say I like that. There's a GIF uh, profile picture. <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. Oh yeah. Like jumping up and down. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, literally, it starts whenever you walk. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Just dipping out of there. That's me just running away from this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Miles and sunglasses. Those are the two. Oh, favorite. God. But yeah. He will never wear. He you is go the ahead. character of all time. There. Yeah. Okay. Accurate. <laughs> Perfect, Genesis. <laughs> uh, for me with Hunter, I always loved Hunter. Admittedly, DC2 in the middle doesn't do a good job, but that's but when you can erase that and you just look at episode one to three and like for like a good solid like six episodes of like hunter content that is enjoyable i feel like his character was always such a fun archetype to uh see go down 
Granted, it was maybe not the best in execution. I still enjoyed his character a lot. I think going into DC Free it was definitely interesting with the choice, but I kind of understand why they want that choice. I'm not like mad at it. I think Hunter definitely has like a good potential regarding what they can do to conclude him as a character because he has gone through so much through this venture camp because like he was like probably like one of if not like top five most like mentally enduring throughout the season of regarding the conflict but i think uh, his episode of his conclusion does set up like a very like nice thing the writers do care about hunter they're gonna prioritize his like uh, feelings more now than ever and we get to really see a story that's been hidden a bit for some people that couldn't see it through but now everyone can see it more regarding the relationship with ali and like his whole mindset for everything because you get to really see the episode through hunter's point of view and i think that storytelling really helps uh it's like within the mystery that we're still like learning about every episode mm-hmm. without a doubt all right so we can go ahead and move on to the scene by scene analysis then Heck yeah. I think and so. to be fair, there will be a lot more to talk about throughout the episode. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, 100%. Like, four just like, this is, um... like the entree or the appetizer. This venture <laughs> camp all stars episode. I think Hunter yeah. is the first character where it's like his elimination episode really does feel like his episode because I don't think Lake felt right. like that was Lake's episode, you know what I mean? No, uh, I, I totally think Lake's agree. episode was mm. realized. Fun, and James's episode was like more of a get out of the blue, but it was not out of the blue but i think this episode was like the first like we're starring the eliminated person if it's like final her well not final hurrah because it's still more for him but, like a good like hurrah like right. like transition into like the next like dark story they're trying to tell within yeah. things and i think that's just such a fun way to like write about it this episode <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Like, i think people could forget that james is in all stars because he's out so quickly <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I forget I too. Sometimes I'm like, oh yeah. I feel so before we jump into the uh, the uh, scene by scene analysis, let's jump into the uh, quick review. We don't need to not spoil because oh. we already spoiled. Um, <laughs> yeah. so a very quick review on your thoughts in the episode. This is the first episode that we're recording oh, the podcast right. before it's released to the public, so this is gonna yes. be interesting. Oh yeah. Um, this episode is pretty good. Um, I think my rating for it would be. It's kind of hard. I think maybe a 7.5 out of 10. That, Ooh, that's kind of, oh, I know. I Because it still like has the nuances of like a setup episode to me. For real. Yeah, no, I get um, that. Like That's why I like for rating. I'm thinking like rating based off like an early episode. Not like rating over like exactly. every episode I could possibly get in quality. Right. But I definitely understand that rating. Because it's like not supposed to be this big like, oh wow, so much is happening there. It's just like setting up for the bomb to come. Yeah, the bomb isn't here yet. Exactly. Yes, definitely. Um, the yeah, the expose was like, um, it was intriguing. Um, the villains got exposed. That was like, it was pretty funny. Um, <laughs> the challenge, it was, it was good. Um, it wasn't the most interesting one, but it made for like good interactions which I liked, yeah. and um, this is, this is, this was just definitely Hunter's struggle episode. I just, <laughs> I felt so bad for him. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was so sad, but um, yeah, I think that it definitely, like, made his story very clear, and the, the elimination was, like, kind of predictable, kind of. Um, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, you could see it coming for a while now, but um, yeah. Pretty good though. I loved how it was structured. I know that feels. I don't know. Seven point eight out of ten. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Right. Things like that in a little. Nine. I'll oh. go with nine. Oh. Um, the reason why I give it a nine, I actually oh. think that's the highest rated because I. Even though it, it did also, I, I do agree with Tam saying it did still feel like a setup episode. Um, I like what was in there. Um, and a lot of it was um, not stuff that you wouldn't expect to see in, 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 in the All-Star season. But it was stuff that really, I don't want to say needed, uh, needed. 
uh, it was at least stuff that like you know like finally we're seeing some i guess sort of like payoff toward it um uh we'll get into that when we get to, <laughs> into it but the point is although there was some setup there was a little bit of payoff and it was really nice to see um so nine out of ten for me that's very accurate very accurate <laughs> <laughs> you love a positive mind here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey, Murph, what are you playing? Oh, Nothing. Wait, like, wait, I'm not wait, even playing anything this time. I promise I'm oh. innocent. Okay. Oh. I'm ready to what get What are you this. dying, boy toy? Oh. oh, God. I think everyone's been going and I'm going to be negative, but I will have to say my rating for this episode is not to copy Genesis, but I do have to give it a 9. And I, at first, uh, I'll be honest, oh. when I first watched the episode, I was like, eh, eh. This was kind of, like, very, like, predictable. But you know what? I really um, appreciate the predictability. Mm. Like, at least it's, like, heading down a good path. There's, like, at least, like, like a comfort food episode. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, I think, like, the way, like, even it's comfort food, they expand on, like, your expectations. Like, you expect this, but you didn't expect it to be this good. And I think that goes for a lot of scenes. Uh, which we'll be talking about later, but I think the only problem is really just like elimination with the, with the confessionals, like that kind of kills me. But it's also something different, and I think that's I do appreciate it because not every episode needs like a long elimination. And um, like, um, anyways, I think like this episode does change the format a bit, and I think it's not a bad change, like setting up a war. I think that's like a war I'm excited to see go down. So it's like, this is just like Hunter's like the first victim of fire. Now it's like ready to see what happens when the blood comes out. And I think that is like leaving more viewers hooks in. And I think that's why I got to give it yeah. a good, because it's an early episode. So it does have disadvantages because of that. But I think for an early episode, so it does everything right that it needs to do. Dang, y'all make it sound so epic. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> <It changed. laughs> um, I'll go next then. I think that this episode, I'm actually going to give it a 10 out of 10. I think uh, it is the best episode of the season. Uh, at, the, at the moment, at the moment. Oh, <laughs> I was about to say. And why, that'd be weird if it peaked so early. <laughs> that'd be really weird. Yeah. <laughs> best episode of the season. Um, Don't watch the rest. Um, I, 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 you know, I, I agree that, yeah, obviously it's episode 5 out of 21. Of course it's going to be a build-up episode. But I do think that there are really good payoffs that... um that kind of come into fruition, mainly because I'm kind of tired of seeing all the, oh, Gruul is toxic, Gruul might be toxic, and now <laughs> now we have confirmation, right? Now we finally have confirmation on that. For real. Right? The alien test stuff, that's all been, mm. like, implied and speculated. Now it's like, there we go, now we're starting to get something. It's like, the wheels are finally spinning. The Villains Alliance, you know, that could have lasted many episodes as a mystery, like Fury and DC1, but no, here it's like, nope, what, it, it took one episode to get exposed. <laughs> right, yeah. It's like, that there's a lot of things that could have been played out for a lot longer, but it's like, no, we're gonna do it now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. I think it, humor's right. It is, it is like, you, you can probably see some of it coming, but it is comfort food where it's like, yes, finally, we're getting to the meat and potatoes of the season. Um, and obviously as a big fan of the love triangle of Hunter Alientes, I was like, wow, this, <laughs> it's a great episode. They finally get an episode where they're all like the stars and it's like, ah, uh, <laughs> finally. <laughs> finally. I love it. <laughs> so it might be my personal bias because I know the future of the season and also I'm a big love triangle fan anyway, but <laughs> yeah, 10 out of 10. <laughs> Well, I, when I tend to, I, I, I guess I'll uh, give it an 8 out of 10, um, okay. because that's just kind of how I, in terms of like my scale of things, I guess. Um, because I, I did like it. I think it's one of the best episodes, definitely. Um, you know, things are developing, and it's, it's getting quite satisfying. Um, I feel like the season's had quite a few good moments that mostly come out of like the team construction and stuff, and a lot of conflicts to do with um the teams choosing who to vote out um like episode three not just the challenge in episode three which i think is really cool um but also the elimination was great because um it puts uh because of the, uh, the kind of ellie and gabby versus um and uh tom and uh and putting lake kind of in a vulnerable position i guess um mm. and and for her to get voted out. I thought that was a good kind of uh, standout moment for me. And then episode four, also the elimination um, with, with Miriam and the formation of the Villains Alliance thing was great. And episode five, I think, is 
quite satisfying. Um, quite a, a another quite simple challenge, I suppose. Um, kind of like the the last episode, but it's great that there's more um, like long term pairings involved in the challenge. Like you get to see uh, Tom and Aiden interact during the challenge, and like Jake and Hunter, um, and so that's that's good. I really like the this late Hunter Ellie and Tess have more a uh, focus and that Hunter gets to be more vulnerable because it's it's great to remind the audience that he um that he can't that he can be that um that sense I think it I don't, I don't know. Um I guess he was um he hasn't really fulfilled that role um earlier in the season. He hasn't um been clear about and vulnerable about what he's feeling and so it's great to see that uh, i was just scrubbing through the episode to try and find kind of standout things to talk about i like that the villains alliance um is now uh uh public to all the teams and i know that it's interesting how that comes to impact things i like the elimination obviously i like what it does for the magenta team and so yeah a, a strong episode i yeah, I mean, I guess we'll go more into some other stuff when we go through it scene by scene. Um, but I think it's a good episode. I don't think it's, like, um, a massive step up from, like, three and four in terms of narrative stake or whatever. Um, but but it is it, it, it continues the plot very nicely and sets things up well for episode six, which will, you know, continue that. And so that's kind of that's kind of my uh, general thoughts on the episode. All right, uh, the host perfect. scene. I, I just discovered the host scene again. That was uh, <laughs> amazing. Yeah. What did they talk about again? I can't remember what they talked about, but it was good. <laughs> we on this podcast are uh, well, except maybe Marks. We're not the biggest fans of the host. <laughs> <laughs> kind of scrub through it. Yeah, I think it's yeah. funny because it's not really a, there isn't really a plot so far. It's just kind of like once an episode, we need to see them. You know talking like this is a thing like uh right um derek and trevor crystals kind of underlings <laughs> that is a continuing aspect of all stars <laughs> yeah yeah oh man so yeah very positive all around very uh, beloved episode it seems that's fun oh okay, oh, okay. so uh yeah, cyan team we start the episode with the cyan team they catch a chicken and um they kind of fight over it um, Tess decides to side with Tom and Aiden with the vote on what to do with the chicken, and uh, I don't know. I mean, is that foreshadowing? Is it foreshadowing? I don't know. Oh, oh uh, yeah. God. Oh, and there's a Survivor I will say... be called the Chicken Freckles, reference to Survivor Heroes vs. Villains. <laughs> ah, I love the writers. <laughs> uh, I think Tess is great this season. I haven't said that yet, but um, yeah, I think like straight away that she's uh, the team placement and the fact that she has um a pre-established relationship with gabby no ellie sorry i always i always confuse their names um with ellie uh goes a long way in um uh making her like a really vital player and also like having a giving her hard choices um and everything and so when she interacts with hunter it's kind of uh surprising because it's like oh yeah uh, i guess they also um have a thing because tess for the rest of the season is occupied with what's going on with her team do you want me to? <laughs> yeah, you come on in. Okay, okay. Wait, like a lot which... of people are saying like, "Oh, you know, Tess is gonna flip on Tom and Aiden to vote out one of the one of the girls," and I'm like, mm, "I don't know." Is oh that, is yeah. That really gonna oh, that is a good point. Yeah, because like uh... when you see like the chicken scene after everyone walks away, you just see like Tess in the middle, like reach an arm both ways. And they're like, I love how the anime really brings. Because if it's like through a line, you wouldn't really notice that. But because it's like animated, and you like test like emotion expressions it really does like highlight that she is the middle like she is like the mediator of the group she will be the side and if they ever go back to elimination regarding the vote unless some big old hammer comes in and like does it just for a shock value but i doubt that's gonna happen because if i I'm destroy being... writing for shock value <laughs> if i'm being on day i think no. i it's foreshadowing not foreshadowing just because it would tie into some of my other theories. I'm hoping it's foreshadowing. Yeah, same. Um, <laughs> I really wanted to be foreshadowing. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it, it very well might not be, and if that's the case, uh, well played. Um, it's but... like even foreshadowing, and they just do the swap, and it's like, nope, you don't get to see this like tension built up for all these episodes. I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, uh, hello, <laughs> uh, the, the, the evil angry bird is laughing right now. <laughs> evil angry bird. <laughs> <laughs> this is just really anticlimactic. <laughs> yeah, this really is. For real. Oh my gosh. I mean, Tess uh, is just, she Tess makes the decision because she's hungry, right? She's like, I'm hungry, so let's eat the yeah. chicken. I guess she doesn't really like align with either of them specifically because of who they are. So I mean, honestly, mood because um, I'm, I you know, food. <laughs> I'm starving. Yeah. The chicken has got to go. I'm not. I don't plan on eating my shit. Like. Cook that chicken. <laughs> I'm happy that Tess said it's the circle of life. I was really happy that got in. <laughs> that, that was such a good line, though. Like, circle of it, life. Like, it's your attitude and like, outlook on life so much. Literally. Oh my god. I'm surprised that got in. I wasn't expecting that one to get in. <laughs> <laughs> and I also love it because it like, highlights like Tess's like, art. <laughs> like, like, it's like she is like an artist with like emotions. But I think that being in there is like a very like nice little feature to her character. Or even if like it's not meant for artsy self, but I do think it's like a fun. Right. So who wants to talk about this one? Hmm. Oh, what is it? Oh. I think this is a Genesis question. Actually, wait. <laughs> I guess I would do it. Oh yeah, oh. no, it is one hundred percent a Genesis one. Uh you know. <gasps> oh. I'll let Emer take over this. This was part of our deal, right? Oh yeah, the deal. I really screwed myself over uh, this yeah, deal. deal. Like I literally got the short end of the stick, even though it's like I get give him two characters. Those two characters say like nothing. <laughs> no, no, trust um... me, you did not get the short end of the stick here. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Anyways. Yeah, you're making so... Dennis's short end of the stick even shorter by taking his girl. I know. This is not I know, really. okay. <laughs> this is the oh. funniest like ever. Anyways, we see the scene where, like, Ashley and Jake go up to Fury. It's like, oh, where's Hunter and Allie? You know, what's funny about the scene is it kind of contrasts, like, the whole fish and scene episode four, where Hunter and like, where's Jake and Ashley? Like, that's, like, a very, like, fun, like, if it's, maybe it's just a coincidence, but it's just so funny looking for that way. Then, and Fury's like, oh, like, in that tent, you see a funny Ashley line. It's like, oh, I hope they better keep it PG in there. Which, <laughs> would be so funny if they put more implications yeah. but i think that was enough damage um anyways <laughs> then you're always like tired Dave, of are we gonna like, talk about the line that you wanted in there no. oh yeah <laughs> we don't have to leave that in Let's talk about but that. i just remembered that and it's very funny the original we, we don't have to actually leave that in the podcast yeah wasn't this <laughs> jace it. though i think i think jace has already uh exposed it to people so i might as well <laughs> oh yeah yeah no but yeah the original no, line was that. uh hope the lovebirds keep in pg in there might join them in a bit and jace commented <laughs> it sounds like ashley wants to join their sexy time <laughs> <laughs> that's what i thought it was when i read it <laughs> um so that that was what uh jared and michael put in and then i i wanted to double down and add hope the lovebirds don't make any deleted scenes in there as oh, a reference no. to something that I won't go into, but oh, <laughs> oh I know that. Yeah, oh, when no. we make an iceberg video, then oh, we'll go into that. My goodness, <laughs> it's uh, iceberg. Mr. Alley I, deleted I totally scene. <laughs> Famous, Famous yeah, yes. No. <laughs> that was just <laughs> Oh boy. Yeah. So should we continue the rest of the scene? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, I don't have like the volume up but i think like fear's like references like oh you guys weren't that keen on one of the work with me you even like made fun of me and like sent me off on my own merry way and then Al and ash is like jake and i talked about it we don't see the talk but then it's like <laughs> we realize we gotta work with you and it's better for our game to get rid of hunter and ally because they're a couple and they're always gonna have the loyalty to each other but as us three that are all like people don't have our relationship in our team we can work together and there would be like obviously no like hierarchy and then Fear is like, she definitely like takes that as consideration because Fear has like been like running around trying to find someone to do. So when two people, two groups are coming to her now, it's like she's like a queen for once, and she's like, I love being the princess of this team. Where everyone's just like pleading their case for why they should go. Huh, but the only huh, one huh. person that's not pleading that should be pleading is Hunter. Hunter's like, nah, I'm not pleading today. His dignity. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Fiore surprisingly has managed to make herself the swing vote. I mean, not really because they vote for Fiore in the end, but still. <laughs> She's kind of in the yeah. because right. no one yeah. likes Fiore. They <laughs> they formed groups uh, and excluded Fiore, and that's why she's the swing. <laughs> right. It's kind of funny though with the voting logic because then it's like 
wait a second, if like Jake has a connection with Hunter and like this is like they put Ali and Fiore in the bottom, right? But we they, they already know Hunter hates Fiore, so they could have just got cut off Ali and they're like, okay, we're safe now because there's no way Fiore works with Hunter. And so they're like, eh, we'll take the risk. Which is like funny thinking about it because they don't really think the game, but that's you know, true. This is Jake and Ash. This is Jake and I mean, Ash. Right, not the most strategic that... players <laughs> for mm. real. <laughs> like they don't think, oh, Hunter and uh, Fiora hate each other. It's like, oh, we just want to get rid of Hunter now. Right. It's like, are you kidding me? You just have a food you can weaponize against them while they're fighting. You can take one of them off, and then you're fine. But they don't think that through because remember this is Ashley who didn't make the merge and this is Jake who's never made a strategic decision That's about coming crazy. to his grandma. T so T is <laughs> Yep. Because if this was like Alec, Alec would have True. totally got rid of Allie and he would have realized Allie is a way better person to get out. But oh God, this is not so Alec. Good. This is um players that are not strategic. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Also Hunter's more like openly strategic, I feel like, than Allie. So I do kind of see it, like, you know, Hunter, he's, you know, always um, on the lookout for, for stuff, I guess. Um, yeah. And Ali is, I guess, more useful in terms of setting up the camp, because uh, Ali has seemingly done more of that than um, Hunter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think... I, uh, this is I think such a little look. thing, but I love how Ali, like, overhears the conversation. I know that's, like, super, like, simplistic. <laughs> But um, in DC too, I don't know. I just it felt like they're all so separated. But the fact that like they're in the vicinity and Ali hears it, it's like, oh yes, thank you. Uh, moving on, the host plot. The um, host plot. <laughs> oh, quote in quotations. The yeah. host scene. Uh, host scene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone um, want to do a brief wait, uh, thing on it? <laughs> oh, basically, it's like Trevor's like, oh, like they're eating food. It's like Trevor's like, I thought you guys liked my cook. It's like, oh, we're joking. And then like they make fun of that Oliver one, yeah. for like chat advice, and Derek's like, "This is you're the host. You should be uh, on the shots." But she's like, "Oliver really helped me out during all these uh, dark times. I really owe it to him." That's actually relevant. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it but it, that's really okay. it. Like, it's not that much. That's it's kind of still, setting like, up it's like a thing. Yeah, yeah it's definitely it, setting it, things it's up. A bit interesting. I do love how like DC 2s like their relationship uh, has like consisted in. Like there's not like a shift during the one year time skip. It's like I owe Oliver still because what he did for me helped my life so much. I think that is like think about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we Four feel four. that impact. Mm -hmm. Is Crystal gonna you know um, go down? Um, oh wait, no, wait, no. What am I thinking about? I'm thinking about season two. I think. <laughs> yeah, no, that's season two. But it's She's it's nice mess. to see Crystal say like appreciate Oliver. Yeah, that's cute. I love Oliver, even though I don't think he's in this episode. <laughs> no, he's he's more no, uh, not even like see. he's in the basement with Dan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but Oliver's actually alive. Is the difference? <laughs> yeah, he's sweeping the corpse of Dan. <laughs> oh my gosh! Sweeping the corpse—that's crazy. Um. So yeah, we can move on from this, right? <laughs> yeah, we can. Yeah. Uh, now yeah. it's time to uphold my end of the deal because oh. now, um, <laughs> we have yeah. um essentially uh okay. So basically, Connor is you know uh being the happy guy he is uh minding his own business when Yule comes in. Uh, wearing a diaper, and oh. he's basically um, sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> my heart just broke. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I love you on this episode. Don't worry, I'm just messing around. But um, <laughs> Yule's hold basically up, hold up. considering what Yule says later, Wait. you like Yule. Hold up. Yeah, Wait, okay, okay, okay. All right. Oh my god. Oh, I don't mean it like. Okay, all right. So, <laughs> see how hard it is, Genesis. <laughs> I, I I understand. I get it. I get it now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is my this is my uh, learning to walk in Tam shoes thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so basically, you was like, hey, like, um, basic, basically, like, oh yeah, like, I think he says something like, you'll have, it, it'll be nice that you'll be in a retirement home once you're out of the game or something like that. And then um, Connor's like, what's your problem? Like, wh what are you doing? Um, and Yule's basically saying, like, you voted for me. Because if you remember, 
um there was um the um in episode four there was the uh the vote uh which uh there, there was that one vote for yule um mm. and yule thinks it's connor um but as Rhea later reveals, it was actually her. <gasps> um, dun, dun, dun. And so uh, it's revealed that she I was, was actually Connor. <laughs> Bro, I literally had I was about to say that. <laughs> uh, so it's revealed that she was wearing the diaper all along, and <laughs> oh um... God. Thank God you're uh, it this way. diaper man. <laughs> diaper. Oh, man. She was wearing um, it all along. <laughs> And she's she's basically like, oh, like you know, uh, it's nice to have Connor be used as a meat shield, yada yada. Ugh. But yeah, um, so that's basically Rhea's whole thing here. Um, and to be fair, it was clever. I didn't think Rhea; it was gonna be Rhea. Um, actually, I should have guessed it would be Rhea because they did have some beef. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Everyone thought it was Gret, but it's like, no, it was Rhea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. She faked her handwriting. I didn't think it'd be Gret anyway, because one, it'd be a little too obvious after the fight happened, and also, I don't know. I think, I think, um, I think leaning into the toxicity toxicity of it works from a narrative standpoint. So, even though Yul's clearly being toxic towards Gret, um, it makes sense for Gret not to vote for him anyway. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess connecting the dots, it really would only be, well, Rhea. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, oh. But it's still... I know, Rhea doesn't like Yule, clearly. Mm. Neither <laughs> of them like Yule. Right. That's the one thing Connor Rhea has qualified. <laughs> <laughs> and as as much as I'll admit, I don't. I'm not a personal fan of the Rhea Connor plot line. I will say. Um, it it's um, uh, I like the whole like oh plus it's fun seeing you paranoid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we love that. I love the yellow team. Yellow team's so fun. I know. Yeah, yeah. Really the most entertaining team. Really, yeah. Um, eh. it's quite a mismatch oh. team, I think, in terms of personality, and that's what's good about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're working good Wait, as I a love collective Magenta. so far. I love Magenta. Well, not when, J when James well, is there, and now that James is gone, it's like no. <laughs> <laughs> have to backtrack on that. They haven't got many rewards, so I think with Rhea's rating of teams are doing really bad. Yeah, no reward. Oh, oh no yeah. reward. <laughs> I love. Felt that. Got her first um, reward though, technically. Right. Yeah. So Connor uh, was given the letter from Miriam about the uh, the villains alliance, and he I don't I don't know he, he he like sneaks into their camp and gives it to them. Right. That's what happens. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Connor really like trusts Miriam. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. They have that, that old connection. <laughs> old connection. Oh, <laughs> um. So we have this. I don't even know what to call it. Like crossfade, or like it goes from Aiden to Ashley as they talk about the contents of the letter. I thought mm. that was interesting, just because I don't think they've done that like editing choice yet. So no, it's, cool. it's so cool. New editing choices. <laughs> So. Those production team killing it. Right? Yeah, they're coming up with new like ways to tell the story. It's pretty great. Um, I remember thinking that would yeah, be no, cool. It goes back and forth. I have a whole new appreciation for editors. Sorry, continue. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. Like, you know, it, it's, it beats Ashley just saying the story for like two minutes. You know what I mean? <laughs> Oh right, right. It'd be so funny if we like uh, a yeah. split trauma dump. Like, like they go like, oh, oh like, this is my side of the story, then splits to the other side. That'd be so. Cool. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, I mean, uh, coming from someone who didn't think it. I... Never mind. Continue. No, you go. No, I I can't say her name, so never mind. Oh, okay. uh, right, oh, right, right. yeah. Ah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Aiden says. Hey guys, we got some mail. Someone left us a note. Tom says, the postal delivery delivers all the way out here. It was <laughs> <laughs> like a double take. So Bruh, that scene made me laugh so hard. Yeah. Uh, DC gets commented on for not really having too many comedic moments. And that's because, like, originally it was made by Spanish uh, Spanish people. So it's like, right. you know, wordplay gags and just, like, those kind of gags aren't super common. Right. But now we're, like, injecting, like, a lot of, like, more, uh, 
more comedy, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like... <laughs> kind of an idiot. Yeah. That's, like, so cheesy, though. That's, like, a total drama joke. Right, yeah. <laughs> I love That's that, cute. though. <laughs> I didn't know the Postal Service would deliver the way I had here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love how, like, DC2 you know, is unintentionally, like, was unintentionally funny sometimes. Yeah. But this yeah. feels, like, really yeah, intentional. Like... It's, it's cute. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and a lot of the comedy comes from Jason's edits. Jason's edits are, like, some of the funniest of the yes. season. I'm going like, to share all of them once the season's done. Just but so um, yeah. it's a lot of like, nuance to these characters. Yeah. I would I would love Jason's to make a video just, like, highlighting process for all these humor jokes. It's like, they really have been killing it, and I'm, like, loving it so much now. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. I mean, the joke the joke itself sucks, but Aiden's double take is, like... <laughs> <laughs> it's, like... It's <laughs> He's like, fucking really? He <laughs> <laughs> um, didn't actually have a personality. I'm so happy. <laughs> For real. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, they read the letter. Tam has a comment on the doc that says, No, that's fucked up. Don't don't out the baddies already. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh my god. I was like, are I'm ready? Like, that, like... like... <laughs> Could Not even one letter gets stuck in it, like the wind blows it away. For real, <laughs> I was ready to push her down the elevator or elevator. Oh my god! just breaks her pen mid right in it, and it's just like a half ripper. <laughs> um, so the contents of the letter uh, cause Fiore and Hunter to actually have a bit of an argument here. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> Because everyone turns on Fiore, don't they? They're For like, real. well, you're yeah, the yeah. villain. Also, not to be shady, but there's something we need to point out. Uh, Connor is a better spy than Tom. Um, because remember, Drew caught Tom. <gasps> no one caught Connor. Like, no one knew it was Connor. Like, even Fiore, like, she was like, gobs drop. Yo. Yeah, too. Like, they had no idea. Like, Tom, we're always training as a spy. He's kind of lacking while Connor just did it so naturally. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, he ate him up. Um, <laughs> yeah, Jace, Jace adds a lot to the scene. In the original scene, it was just immediately Fury and Hunter start fighting. But here, uh, Jace added that Jake is also kind of on the defense. And so is Ashley about being called senile and about Fury saying that she doesn't have a brain. <laughs> yeah, because um, remember, like, I know a lot of people were interested about, like, Jake's reaction to Mirror. I think really adding Jake into the drama was such a small ball within the letter. Because if it was just Hunter, I think everyone would have been. Because it was like more dynamic and the whole same thing, I think that's what makes this scene so much be- more better and have like a way more positive reaction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, Fiori calls him Pasty Face. Pasty Face. Yeah, the original line was. Mouth I had to okay, play... mouth breather. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> mouth oh my gosh, 11? I had to play Hanzo like sizing up to Fiori, which is funny. <laughs> He's like, you're a pimp squeeze. <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and then, of course, there's the your one to judge line. Um, about to Allie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, this scene was massively reworked. I'm looking at the script. Yeah, Jace really added all the nuances here with, uh, yeah. for God's sake, Hunter, you're a grown man fighting with a child. Easy for you to, or whatever the line was, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and, you know, like Jamo said earlier in the uh, in the episode, uh, that was an intentional callback to the uh, the crying kids online or whatever. Oh, yo, this scene really got reworked. Oh, okay. Yeah, this scene really got reworked. It's it's so much better for it. Yeah, right? for so real. Much more yeah, this seems like a highlight. Like, having it be reworked is a huge priority, and I think down it was needed. Yeah, just like making the reactions like seem more natural, and we mm-hmm. love our throwbacks. Yes. Uh, same with the following scene on Cyan, where Ellie, Tess, Tom, uh, Aiden, and Gabby are all arguing over the letter. That oh, one yeah. also got massively re by Jace. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, my God. I love with the Cyan, uh, the Cyan one more, because remember, Miriam screwed them over, <laughs> but past actions are coming back to bite her once again. He's booted. And it's like, Sean's like, do we really have to trust Miriam? Because she's the same person who um, framed us within the wrong challenge, and that's why we yeah. lost Lake, because of... We really need to trust her again. That's where Gabby, like, even though you can say, oh, Gabby, stop protecting your girlfriend. She doesn't know the facts. Like, Miriam has lied to her multiple times. But for Miriam to lie again was not out of the where. 
Granted, this whole letter would make no sense for her to just deceive if she's booted. Like, does she just want to cause chaos? Like, maybe they can see it as protect and shake, I guess. But still, it's still like a lot to process for everyone. So that's why a lot of people are like really familiar because like she has no reason to do this. And some people are like, I don't know. I think that's just so well written within like how it's have consequences. That's what hit the dot with the science being so much more. <laughs> Stuff like uh, Lake being mentioned, Tess being the mediator, um, Tom arguing, and Aiden having agency. Those were all like not mm. in the original scene. Like Jay's added so much mm. of those dynamics to the uh, scene. Like the original line was Aiden was like, uh, I guess, I guess we can give you the benefit of the doubt. It's like, come on, <laughs> let's give Aiden the backbone here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, God, just a little. <laughs> that's so Aiden's, real. Aiden's his little e boy self. He's like, eh, I'm going to be naive again. It's like, sure, we'll give you the <laughs> answer. I'm like, Yo, have a reaction, please. Be human being for one. For Annoyed. Real? Oh my yeah. god. This scene ends with them just being like, they're shrugging it off. But here, uh, Tess is like, they're gone because they all storm off. It's like, yeah, it's so much better now, thank God. It's the long again <laughs> in life. I like that yeah. uh, and Then Ellie has a confessional saying that she doesn't really know Ellie. She's not the same when she works in Denny's. You know, she's so stressed now. <laughs> oh my god. The Denny's. <laughs> Um, now, insight yeah. really helps the story. So, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah no, I love when they like all these characters more agency and more conflict. You know, exactly. All right, so uh, Hunter is not very happy um, about Fiore being exposed as the other team, as working with the other team, because you know he, he already uh, was suspicious of that, and now it's confirmed. And Ali's like. I know you're mad, but like, you gotta, you gotta be with me on this because, and we might have to work with Fiore still because if not, she might work with Jake and Ashley, and then we'd be in trouble. And Hunter's like, well, why would they do that? Because Fiore was already exposed. Um, and then Ali continues to push this, and then it kind of gets into, um, some underlying kind of uh aspects of their, their relationship uh like hunter being like man i'm always the one who messes up aren't i and then um and ali be i like that line where Ali's like um this is our chance to prove us ourselves for people to to see us in a better light uh really playing into ali being self-conscious about um uh receiving all that online hate um yeah mm -hmm. so i guess ali's self-conscious um and hunter just doesn't care. He cares more about um, his uh, about standing his ground, um, and so Hunter and Ali kind of split off from that. They have a dramatic. Ali has a dramatic like you make everything worse. That's all you ever do. That that's the line. Oof, um, and then, um, uh, but then Crystal announces the challenge, so we don't really get much. Um, uh, uh, conclusion to that, and it's like, oh, what's gonna happen in the challenge? You know, <laughs> um, Hunt, Ali and Hunter, they 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 be having problems. What do you guys <laughs> think about this scene? Uh, it was definitely fun to voice act. I, I like doing the voice acting. I was oh. like, yeah, some uh, some stuff to work with. I get to yell. <laughs> <laughs> I felt yeah, that. I think that you know, some of the Hunter and Ali fights were a little unnecessarily, you know, but this one was definitely the best one. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like this one is very necessary. It shows both sides of the story, both the characters. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, the original script, this one was significantly longer, but we cut it down a lot. And uh, I feel like less is more in this case. You know? Really? Because I'm reading it now, and it feels pretty tight. It feels pretty like everything it needs to be. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. It was a lot longer. Yeah. We cut a lot longer. <laughs> That's really good. Because originally it was going to be like, mm. oh, yes, we have to get Fury back on our side because then we'll have three votes and then our option will be to vote <laughs> Ashley or Jake. And then we have the majority. It's like, we don't need that. Dang. <laughs> no, you don't need it. Like, that's common sense. It's like, there's five people. Like, of course, like, if they're fighting over Fiore, obviously they're going to want to vote off one of the two. Like, I don't think that needs to be said. And I think that's why this conversation works so well, is that anything that needs to be inferenced is already known to the viewer. Now it's just, like, them going for their problems of, like, trying to get to a a standard like point of like how to approach but right now there's still like a divide exactly yeah. yeah i like how it sets up like um the conflict within the team at the start of the episode because like then obviously magenta is going to lose the episode and it's going to be like well something's going to happen someone's going to go home 
and then it's going to be someone a, a different group is going to have power they do a great job of like setting that up at the start of the episode and then at the end of the episode it's like all right what's going to happen here are uh, um jake and ashley and gonna uh succeed here or are hunter and ally and then obviously hunter and ally don't succeed but yeah <laughs> Oh, Game yeah. over. Yeah. Game I got- <laughs> no, that was Jace. That was a meme. People are accusing me of putting that. That was a meme. <laughs> <That's-> <laughs> Not the bus. Oh my god. You and Jace. I feel like on it. That's such a that's such a JPEG line. I'm like, that's not me. <laughs> no, I didn't think it was you. I was like, it's Jace, but I didn't want to accuse Jace. So I was like, yeah, I'll just stay quiet. Um. No, but it's a, it's a good. It, I mean, okay, we're, it's it's later on, but you know, it's a good line anyway. It's but, a great um, line. I, I gotta ask you guys. Is after 16 episodes, is that conversation with Hunter and Allie, is that Allie's first standout moment of the series? Yes. Like, is that the first time where she actually shines? Yes. Yes. 100%. Wait. Like. Which, this conversation? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The I think she had other shine in mind, but I do agree this is like the best like argument so far. Well, I was just say like, to me, this feels like the first time Allie really feels like a human with like emotions and real like personal feelings about something and uh, the tension here is just so good like i think it really like emphasizes their relationship and i think it's the first time that we really see like the competition actually affecting their relationship like in dc2 we never got to see that so um yeah it's really great to see like there's stakes involved and like um yeah even though like the reactions to each other were very emotionally charged. It came from like what they're what they're thinking at the time. So like we really get to like have that insight into their, into their uh, mindset. So yeah. Hey, it's your host Steamer. Before we go back to the Central Dispatch, I want to thank the fans to make lovely art of us. For audio listeners, you will be missing out. But check us out on YouTube, Golden Goose Productions, to see the art. If you want to have art featured, tag one of the podcast hosts with the links of our handles in the description. And if you're enjoying the podcast, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe as we appreciate it. After subscribing, please turn on notifications for future episodes of the podcast. Now, let's continue back to the podcast. Yeah, yeah, it's great um, how they're talking about something that is obviously very important to their team and to how they stay in the game, but... um. Then it, but it, it it inevitably gets to the underlying um, uh, emotions of you know Ali receiving hate online, yeah. um, and Hunter, you know, wanting to help Ali with that, um, and so yeah, it's great how it evolves that. Yeah, I was gonna put DC three Ali and sweating like a dog tear. I'm just saying. Anyway, <laughs> oh, my <God. laughs> oh my god, why are you bringing this up you're, right now? You're, you're ahead of your time, Genesis. You were you're just a few episodes too early. Hey, like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> all honor. Um, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, still... no, I mean, it took 16 episodes, but better late than never. Here we go. Her first like real standout scene. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah, um, Ali and Hunter couldn't have an argument scene in DC two because they were both like. Too kind of <laughs> weak and awkward. I want to ask JMO a, a question. Um, do you think that there's like an added like dimension of difficulty because you have to act opposite of three different alleys, three different <laughs> voice actors? Oh yeah. No, I've never, I've never found that a factor. I just do what I do, and then whatever comes out the other side is, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> it, it is what it is, I guess. Obviously, Hunter we so can't. Real. You know. Together. but i really like but but joy is great to um to in this scene like you know joy really um brings it alongside me and so you feel like it's two people you know arguing yeah you and, guys feel like... and bringing the same level of um uh emotion into it literally it feels yeah, like you guys are recording in the same room like 
Yeah, I was exactly. gonna say there's some interactions where it's like you can kind of tell they're recording individually, but Hunter and Allie, I'm like, yeah, they're <laughs> they might as well be recording the same room. Exactly. Yeah, like the same booth at this point because it's like they hit every like kind of like tone of how they have to deliver the voice, and it matches so perfectly. I think it's like so unintentional, but it just lands. It just shows like the talent and these characters is like, all right, I gotta do this. And I think that is like something that is very should be well respected within the voice acting part. Of this dynamic. Mm-hmm. So the next scene, uh, what do we think? Uh, they the all the teams get back together. Well, it's not it's not quite the challenge because all the teams get together and then Crystal's like, Miriam is gone, and Jake's like, Wow, Miriam's gone. <laughs> so that is true. <laughs> uh, no, I guess some of them might have thought it was forged, but. And it was that's important. actually about it. That's that's pretty that's pretty good summary. We actually yeah, don't need to talk about that anymore. That's actually so good. <laughs> like Tom's like, I'm gonna use Anyways. my police academy training. Um, but he doesn't. I don't think he does that for, in this episode at least. Oh, well, I think no, he does. That's later on. Yeah. Later. <laughs> oh wait, does he? Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah. No, no, actually, he does. Right here. Wait, wait. After. Christmas. Oh yeah, he does. Yeah. Oh my god. Like professional, yeah. but like he doesn't like actually like spy. Like, I was like so excited. I was waiting like a spy shack. Um, I've been asking for this for so long. That's such a Tom so move. It be a thing. I'm like, yes. <laughs> Just say yeah. it and then never I'm gonna do, do it. it. Wait, Guess sorry. It's time you were, to use my police just... academy training. Next episode. You were excited yeah. for spy stuff. I don't know. <laughs> Not spy, but the, if you watch Survivor, you'll have an appreciation for the strategy. It's called the spy shack. We basically have like you're away from like the team you spy on like people talking and that's how you get info on these types of games but for tom it's more about like this whole villains oh. i think that's what's so, so yeah. much the challenge is based oh. i was thinking about spy kids too <laughs> sorry oh my god <laughs> what happened? i didn't know this was a term no this is a survivor thing yes that's it's, crazy it's invented by a player by <laughs> um, so the uh, the challenge is just the DC2 finality, and I think it was also episode 1 of DC2 as well? Like, this is the yes. same challenge? The biking and the, what was it, the run with the flag? The fun thing is, Rhea does it both times. <gasps> it's like, oh my really god. Awesome. Started does Rhea win running. both times as well? Yeah, she Rhea does win first both, times. both times. Okay. She, she's yeah. consistent. That's a slay. She's like, like Michelle. Rhea's a good runner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's a runner. She's a, she's, a she's a runner. She's a track star. <laughs> the twin energy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, but yeah, no. Hunter and Jake have a quick scene where they talk about the uh, villains' alliance. <laughs> um, you know, pleasing the Hunt Jake yes. fans everywhere. People are like, "You added yes, that Hunt Jake, Hunt Jake fan." But uh, we're like, "No, we wrote this in like like September. <laughs> like we did not know about Hunt Jake." I think a lot of fans no think idea. that. Um, Adventure Camp gets written like I each episode. It's like, oh wow, the first episode came out. They're gonna write it and animate it in two weeks. Oh, there's obviously a lot of like <laughs> for that. Like, they're not just about to like saying, all right, the season ended. We're gonna write this two months. Like they've been writing it before two months. Like they've been writing it while DC One was airing for DC. <laughs> That's fair. But I was expecting Hunter and Jake to at least interact before this point. Um, partially because they're on the same team and because um. But I guess they stick to Jake sticks to Ashley and Hunter sticks to Allie in regards to that. They, yeah. they don't trust each other too much. But I thought, um, I don't know, because of the the fact that Tom and Aiden uh, form a connection, I, I I was maybe expecting a parallel there with uh, Hunter and Jake because um, with Hunter being like the only other guy. And I, and this scene basically fulfills that. To be fair, this scene is basically just. Um, Hunter and Jake, you know, actually talking about um, their their problems or whatever. Wait, what happens? Oh no, they talk about strategy. Sorry, I'm gonna. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> Hunter's like, oh, want to vote and kick out Fiore, and then it just. And also, there's like a. Oh, I guess thing. Hunter mentions like Miriam. He's like, oh yeah, um, you know, Miriam, you know, it sucks for you that Miriam got voted out. Um, <laughs> and then Hunter tries to work with Jake, which which is interesting. Allie's mad because yeah. Hunter won't work with Fiore, and Hunter's like, maybe I can work with Jake. <laughs> um, but then it doesn't work because Hunter runs into a tree. And that's the only <laughs> reason why he gets eliminated, is because he couldn't sort things out with Jake, because he ran into a tree. 
Yeah, man. Oh, he can the steal the deal. Taking both Oliver and Hunter's lives. For... <laughs> oh my god! That damn tree. The same challenge as well. For... <gasps> I know it's hilarious. That's crazy. The tree is a kill count. That damn tree. Man, that tree. I love how I love the trend of whenever someone, um, whenever there's a challenge where they have to ride something, uh, there's a hilarious. Li- someone hits a tree with hilarious <laughs> animation. That, um... Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Yeah. I love Ali falling off in episode one. Oh yeah, that's yeah. a great, that's a great gift. <laughs> no. oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Um, no, but Hunter says, "Lock me in, you, me, Ali." Or sorry, you, me, Ashley, and yeah, oh, that, that that was the name that got cut off. Yeah, good. <laughs> me likey. Oh, uh, what's funny about that is I just want to mention like um, impact sounds and stuff, and just like non-lines like ah or whatever you really have to i f- i get self-conscious if i don't deliver them properly because you really have to to kind of sell them and have them match the animation but you don't know what the animation is going to be like mm. so if your character like falls off a cliff and you're just like ah and you don't properly commit then you, you just sound it sounds dumb it ruins the scene <laughs> and so you yeah. really have to commit to those things i i yeah. I, I think Hunter getting hit by a tree, I made, like, an appropriate sound. Yeah. I guess. No, I agree. Yeah, we, we asked Badon to record himself screaming in different ways. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Those were the quite interesting. Voice actor, he goes, ah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Ignore that. <laughs> that damn tree that fucking Oliver bumped into. Um, so, Yule has I like a, the idea uh, that it's the same tree. <laughs> <laughs> so Yule has a uh, drives by him or bikes by him, I guess, and uh, <laughs> unnecessarily makes fun of him for like no reason. I know, it's right? So Such a mean and Hunter has this amazing comeback. Same old guy, and it's like yes, yeah. So very slightly acknowledging the alliance mm-hmm. that they had. I yeah. really wanted that in. I'm so happy I got in. I'm I'm oh, really God. happy that that they had a little moment. <laughs> I like I like yes. Uh, Yunter and I, um, thriving. And then that Everything neatly sets up to, the, like the Gret and Yule uh, conversation where Gret's like, you gotta be careful, you know? Um, you can't make too many enemies. Yeah. I guess. Um, <laughs> Man, one thing about that scene is actually built up because in episode two, we see Yule like take down, like Miriam's like, you look like the old lady I pushed later. And Gret has, like, an upset face, because Gret wants to play this game not making enemies, because, like, she hated how she was on TV, acting like... Mm-hmm. But seeing her boyfriend be act- antagonistic and she's dating him, she doesn't like that image. Like, we gotta act like good people, because I don't want to look like the person that people bold me for. I look like a person that has dignity, is someone who's well-respected, people can love, but Yul doesn't care. Yul's like, eh, I'm famous, this will, uh, run- this will like, get past me, I've done worse. <laughs> and then Gret's just like, it leaves her uneasy. Well, then Yule, uh, says a pretty low blow to Gret, I guess. Calls her oh. thunder thighs. Um, Ron Cameron, oh, for God's yeah. sake. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Let's just say Anyone? that line has gotten the people within, like, the Patreon, like, I've noticed, like, a lot of people being upset with that line, and rightfully so, because Yule, and this is, like, the first, like, sign of their toxic relationship. Which is morally gonna... Mm. Maybe they'll get better. Maybe they'll recover. Nah, they're not gonna recover, let's be honest. Yeah. But it's, like, nice yeah, to yeah. see people... people everyone had these thoughts, like, Yule, it's the same old deal. Why would they make Yule nice? Because if Yule's nice, let's be honest, it'd be boring. Right. Like, I want a Yule... Like, I don't think everyone deserves to be... I think some people need to still be a piece of... I think that is... I love how the suspicions are finally being cleared. It's like episode five. Guess what? You guys are right. Yule isn't gonna change for, and he is kind of the toxic side in the relationship. Exactly. I just love how that was done. Yeah, everyone got brought back to reality. Yule is not boyfriend yeah. material. <laughs> so Oop, there goes gravity. Uh, well, Look Yule was I'm good just, now. I'm just impressed oh, that. Uh... Right. <laughs> I'm just impressed that it took five episodes to fruition. For I real. remember being so scared. I was like, oh boy, the first couple of episodes, Yule's going to be like, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Just shameless. Literally. But, uh, yeah. Yes. Unfiltered. We were so scared. But we, uh, we waited. We waited four episodes. Yeah. We gave you the comic book form. <laughs> now here it is. Yeah. Right. I was like, I think that was a good idea. I also want to kill him. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but what's I gonna happen from it. here? You know, Ooh. like where where's Gret gonna draw the line? Right. Yeah. You know? That is a good question oh, because like Gret hasn't really set her limit. Yeah, like she says, I don't like this, honey. Like she's never like outright. Him. She's always been had like a nurturing voice, kind of like Lil. Maybe she got that. Maybe they're friends. Well, but um, <laughs> I get into that. There's more to um, come. Uh, yeah, uh, Gret is Lil going to be in this season? Uh, you'll find out. Yeah, yeah, Gret lore. Um, also, I just love the random interactions where characters care about other characters. Like Gret, just you know, even though she never interacted with Hunter yet. Gret cares about Hunter. Just like last episode, Connor cares about Ellie. It's like, yeah, um, it's nice, like world building, I guess. Even though if they don't share dialogue, mm-hmm. like they care about each other. I think that's great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, no, even even when Hunter's not uh, involved, he's still uh, yeah. he's still driving the plot. Same old guy. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Same old guy. <laughs> um, next Hunter's we have story. Uh, Hunter always has agency. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, next, we have um, Ellie and Tess on the bikes. Um, this scene was actually going to get deleted. I'm glad it wasn't because, you know, my two favorites get to talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> um, oh, God. But yeah, no, they just talk about, you know, three million bucks are on the line. Tess like, what the heck? I've never seen you like this. And that's about it. <laughs> I, won't need I like that down. Tess establishes that. I like that. I mean, I like the fact that Ellie and Tess have an established relationship. And I think Tess is at another point in this episode. Or maybe last episode. I think it was last episode. Um, Tess is like, yeah, you know, Ellie's just not the same person that I know. And it's kind of, it's weird for me. And I, I, I like that element of their relationship. I like that it's getting tested. I want to see where it goes. Oh, There's one more. Are you guys ready for this? Are you guys ready for this? This is this is where Emer, like, cried like a baby when he saw this. What? You guys ready? You guys ready? Yeah. Hunter and Tess finally interact for the first time in 15 episodes. <gasps> oh my well, god. Hey. <laughs> finally we cheered. You no longer have to use, like, them sitting. Dead. What? Real. Tess and. What? I mean, Tess and. No, one on one interact. One on one. Like, like, no, they interact right, in like, literally the finale, I guess, of <laughs> the two or one. Like DC3. It's, it, yeah, it's their first interaction with DC3. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Oh. Um, uh, I, I don't, I, unless I'm mistaken, I don't think they have a single scene where they interact without Ellie in the middle since the uh, no. depression mm-hmm. uh, scene. Yeah, mm, so, that's true. Yeah, for, without Ellie, the first time, though, there's yeah. no middleman. It's just the two of them again. Yeah, really yes. Like, just, I, I wonder if, like, when watching the episode, some people are like, "That's it," because it was just a short interaction. Right. <laughs> Even though there's a scene later. <laughs> I wonder how many people are so. <laughs> I, I, like, I don't later. care if it's short. I'm taking the passion to the vein. <laughs> Yeah, the Huntes fans finally get thrown a bone after all this time. Yay! <laughs> uh, but Ellie's like, nope, there's no time to waste, let's go! Oh, <laughs> I love More on that later. <laughs> uh, Genesis, why don't you do this next scene? It's, it's a very short one, but it's cute. I- and I- I- actually... <laughs> Emer? <laughs> well, yeah, I made a freaking deal with him. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> you see, Ali, like, remember Ali didn't have much, like, growth to her? But this time, she is kind of afraid of heights. It's interesting. Because in DC2 Episode 9, she did that whole slut. Not a fear in her aunts of her body. But this time, I think it's just so interesting to give Allie this. It's like, it wouldn't, it seems like so shocking, but it feels fine. Because like she needed to really, like, ever open up to other people. And I think this her first interaction, Ashley, I really love it. Like, I do love the idea of, like, Ashley, like, even though she doesn't know video games, she tries, like, to really play into it. She's like, it's like a simulator. It's like a diver. Um, it's like, <laughs> I just love to see, like, I love that, it. yeah. Aww. Because so he was in the farm Great. in Texas. Yeah. Right. Great um, to see them kind of clash um, between those two. Them just trying to connect, you know? It's great. Exactly. Because yeah. these are two people who never interact in the real world unless they're in this game. But <laughs> exactly. this is like some interactions that are mm. so like interesting because you'll never like see it on, on this. Show. I think that's why. Oh, diving platform simulator. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have. What's that game? I don't think... <laughs> There's like a game where okay. you you play like an Olympic runner. And it's like impossible to run. That oh, one. Co-op? Oh, co-op. Yeah, co-op. That's it. <laughs> Like that. That's just what I'm imagining. <laughs> I love co-op. Yeah. 
<laughs> in uh, episode one, they reference a Ali references what's it called? Uh, forest? No, sorry, episode two, it's a uh, forest craft. But now we have dubbing platform simulator. The oh, fake yeah. video game titles are so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> there are Tony. Doesn't she still say Switch though, or? They replaced. Oh yeah, that, that, that no, that one's still there. The Nintendo Switch. Yeah, Nintendo, the famous Nintendo copyright claim for on those from animation cartoons. <laughs> yeah, that whole care. scandal. <laughs> we survived Fresh TV's lawsuit, but Nintendo's gonna get us. <laughs> That'd be so funny if Ali caused the lawsuit. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. More, more video game lore. Like, it's weird. Then the whole DC too. I really don't think Ali had like a single like video gamey moment, right? Where she's like, oh my god, it's, it's just like. Mm-hmm. It's just like in Monster Mon. Mm-hmm. Gotta catch them all. Monster <laughs> Mon? No. Oh my god. Um, the kindergarten reference. I'm just, I'm just gonna say this now just so that we don't have to talk about the game over thing later. But Jared explicitly <laughs> was like, guys, can we tone down the Ali gamer jokes, please? It's too that much. That was so freaking funny. <laughs> <laughs> like, we don't need to have her say it's super effective yeah. every line. Oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> we lost control of that. Yeah, we, yeah. we went a little over <laughs> I like the uh, idea of her using like, gamer quotes as like an awkward like response. Like, I had, like position going so she just relies on her like, gamer geeky self. But like in serious conversation where she's like, well, but she doesn't need to rely on it. I think that would make things more interesting with her character. But it's not just like. I did like fan service, but instead it's just like it adds onto her personality. It's very interesting. So anyway, uh, Aiden and Tom have a scene where like I don't even know how this works. Like Aiden just goes on Tom's back. I feel like that'd be extremely difficult to swim with someone on your back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Go test it. <laughs> Go test it. All right, Tam, come on. Oh no! Oh my <laughs> Go God! Flight. Drum. Mm. Going to Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to carry me while you swim. <laughs> Um, oh my god! So <laughs> no, so Aiden and uh, Aiden talks about uh, the cliff diving lessons with James or whatever. Uh, yeah. Overcoming last season's trauma. So this is the second time that someone is trying to overcome their trauma from the season finale. <gasps> First it was Rhea, now it's that's Aiden. Oh yeah. It's great. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. Very traumatic time. <laughs> James can uh... overcome his trauma in the motel. <laughs> hmm. We're talking yeah. to. I people. like that Aiden gets something <laughs> for his own. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, Aiden needed this. Go himself. I, was saying, I remember saying, I was like, if Aiden, I either God doesn't do anything to fix his fear of heights during this time skip, I will be erupted. You know what? It was solved, so. Aww. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> also, uh, Jake doesn't have a line in this scene, but like, there's a quick shot of him looking sad while they talk. It's pretty great. <laughs> uh, Jake's I was like, I like that. that. Oh my like, god. I like that. We don't need uh we don't need dialogue to show the story, you know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, I'm just being sad. <laughs> I think relying on the animation is always great. Right. Yeah. Uh then we have the intermission, which genuinely jump scared me just because it was uh Vicer and not Michael for once. Yeah, <laughs> I know. it did for me too. <laughs> Yeah. Especially because Aiden just had a line. It's like, I wish that it wasn't immediately after an Aiden scene, just so that we have a bit of time. <laughs> That's true. I have a question. It's like, Aiden, why are you here? Does any, of the, does any of the voice actors want to talk about the whole cameo process for those who don't know Ooh. about it? Oh, yeah. Jamo, you want to talk? Because me and Genesis aren't getting, aren't getting this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I, I guess. So basically, uh, Odd Nation added a, a feature to the Patreon where... You can request a cameo from your favorite character in the show, and basically, um, you can apply for it, you can choose a character, you can write a little message that they will say, I guess, and I guess the voice actor will add in, um, I'm just going off the, the test one, which I've seen, the, um, one of the only ones that's public, um, but that's, like, test very much in character, just giving a little personal message and shout out to, um, a fan of the show. And so you can get those and also the animators um, uh, create them as well. So, yeah, that's about it. I, I don't know too much about it. Uh, I'm, I, I certainly haven't gotten any uh, requests so far. They, Jared Rod have been like, hey, can you say this? No. <laughs> Let's just say that after uh, after episode five, you're going to get a lot. <laughs> right. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> mm. Well, I feel like it, it's not like a lot of people don't know about it yet, I guess. Yeah, um, I don't know how many well. of them they've actually made yet, as well. So that's true. I heard uh, that they made at least uh, like ten now. They're on their. Like, that's awesome. Episode. Really? Wow. Damn. Yeah. I love so that because like, because like these are animators who are also going to She has two characters. She has two characters. I know, and Michael. Like Michael's gonna. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't think Oliver's. Is. Oliver. Everyone wants Oliver. <laughs> oh, cat. I want. Too. I'm gonna order one for Oliver. Oh, oh nice. That's perfect. If you don't like the way the season is going, you if you just pay like four thousand US dollars, you can remake the whole season. Just get all the voice actors to say some lines. <laughs> you rewrite. Oh my god, that's just get Aiden to be like, yeah, I love Tom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like have him with Tom at the time, but you can request it. Like, oh my I'm with god! You. It applies around my stomach. Tom I love Obama. fans going nuts. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I wouldn't be surprised if after this episode, Hunter gets like a lot of uh, voice cameo work. <laughs> no, I, I, no, I agree. There's like a huge yeah. uprising in Hunter. Oh, so you might. Ah, uh, you. Might... I mean, that's gonna be super that's cool. Great. I'm definitely happy to do that. I, I love doing. Uh, I'm happy to do stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. It's fun voicing Hunter in different scenarios, even like in the 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 Patreon uh, oh. shoutouts at the end of this episode, oh. which we'll get to later. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, the the, oh, yeah, the shoutouts are a great idea. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get it. Well, the device is so awesome. <laughs> this is the second season yeah. that Hunter gets kind of a um, what's it called? customized like patreon shout out thing because in dc2 he was in like the <gasps> oh yeah tent or whatever yeah he yeah. did like the selfie he's thing. the only one he's different yeah because he doesn't get the bus yeah <laughs> and the hunter shaka yeah. and Shaka's then they put so one cute. in episode one as well <laughs> so cute yeah, Hun yeah hunter um i noticed that like the patreon shout i know we're skipping here but it's not part of the episode so it's fine but um <laughs> mm. he had a lot more improv than usual like a lot of the other characters get like maybe like a bit of improv but hunter got so much it's great i know I love it. <laughs> Mm, I was I was trying to think like I didn't want it to be too much. I wanted it to be because like there's there's like minutes at a time where I'm just reading the names and I'm like yeah I can't you know make a comment about every name. Um, so I only did the ones that I thought until would actually have a kind of something funny to, that I would could actually think of something funny to say about. Speaking of spicy. <laughs> Speaking of spicy. <laughs> that was that just came up because I I don't I don't know. That's just kind of so happened. good. <laughs> Rhea's a parasite. I gave you a shout out, Sam. <laughs> oh, thank you. I replayed it like. Because I remember how big of a deal times. it was when you um got uh when you start when people started saying your Patreon name. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think blew up. Stuff. Yeah. Sam got an One edit. episode after God. Hunter's boot in DC two, so you, you just barely missed. I know. <laughs> oh my God. Dang. <laughs> yeah. You got Marcus for your first. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, it was Marcus. <laughs> then, like, James just says, Cam uh, loves iconic. you all. No spicy ad. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah <laughs> just straightforward. Yeah, he didn't. <laughs> you gotta pay the $80 for that. <laughs> he has a paywall. Oh, He's like, no $15 here. <laughs> so, uh,. We're almost done with the episode. It's a very, very, uh, very heavy episode. I'll even, like, halfway uh, through. Wow. Yeah, because there's no, there's no like strategizing before the elimination. They just get into it. They just have like five confessions. Oh, I forgot the sure. Patreon gets takes like a lot of the episodes. Sorry, yeah, you're right. We are nearly done with it. No, yeah, exactly. Um, so, Jmo, you want to introduce uh, this scene because uh, you mentioned the scene earlier. What happens in this scene? Uh, let's see. Hunter Tess. Um, oh, Hunter and Tess. All right. I, I, well, uh, my main really comment was <laughs> that like in comparison to uh, the DC two, you know, um. Tess, it, it's a lot more of a conversation, um, and I like how Tess is um, playing the kind of mediator and being and getting Hunter to open up about this, and how it do, it, it, it does have uh, an impact on Tess, you know, like Tess cares about Hunter and Ali, um, but I guess I should say like um, Tess wants to know why Hunter's um, you know a bit down, and obviously it's because of that fight that Hunter and Ali had earlier, um, and I guess there's the one line where um, Ellie is paranoid about it, and is like, you know, you can't you can't spill anything about our team. Um, you got to keep your friends separate. Um, and Tess, I like how Tess st stands up for Hunter. Like, you don't know him like I do. Um, I really like that. That Tess is like, yeah, Hunter's my friend. I'm gonna. I I feel like I w I want to talk to him, and I will. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I th that was hands down my favorite test line so far of, of what I've added. Yeah. I'm like I'm so happy that one made it in. Like she stands up to Ellie. So good. Yeah. Mm. For real. Uh, that was your idea. Oh, I did not yeah. know. That. And I, yeah, I, 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 
Well, I like good that so Jason's good. Lines are, are mine. <laughs> <laughs> Though Jace is slowly eclipsing me so far. He's he's had a lot of uh, test lines as well. <laughs> oh. You know, mm-hmm. and I think it's not even just testing up Telly because other people do it before. It's just her first like friend doing it. I think that's what makes the scene way more better because it's like like Jake, like that's they were true. friends, but like they're enemies now. But like Tess was someone like Ellie values as a person. So seeing Tess like say, "I can't take your garbage. I'm gonna go hang out with someone." Person. Right. I'm not gonna spill the games. It's like I trust hunt. And Ellie just was just gobs dropped because she's like, "Damn, like my own like friend that I have like during college, like telling me the facts." I think that's just what makes it way more better. Because if like for example like. If Aiden or Tom said it, it wouldn't have been that powerful because Tess says it. I think it just really leaves more of like a good feeling afterward. That's an amazing yeah. point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the parallel is just so good. Of um, now that Tess mm-hmm. is like more uh, mentally healthy, I guess now she can uh, mm-hmm. stand up for Hunter. Like how uh, he stood up for her back then, back Aww. in the day. Yeah. <laughs> That's cute. so cute. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. Yeah. I think what's great about this scene is that um, if Tess and Allie interact in the future, then it'll be very interesting. There's one line that I want to highlight, which is where um, Tess says, like, Allie's, Allie always said that she was okay over text, because obviously Allie and Tess haven't talked uh, for, for a couple months. Right. Um, and so yeah. Tess is like... Um, and so, yeah, Tess didn't know about this, and Tess is, you know, interested... And so, um, if Tess talks to Allie about it, then I feel like that will be interesting. Yeah. Emma, you totally remind me about one thing that happened in episode one. It's during that Emily interview. Tess, like, I heard a rumor because Allie never told her because she was keeping up, like, this, like, perfect life face. But from, like, internet people, like, she heard around about it. She never got to hear it. Oh, no, I that was a rumor that, that they were they were going through they were going through uh, problems in their relationship. That was yeah. what the yeah that was what the the rumor was. Um, yep. Tess says that it it wasn't like Tess literally didn't hear about the relationship at all. Um, no, like she knew. The, the, she told Allie Tess to do said, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tess said that. So, uh, so oh, I guess yeah. there is like kind of minimal communication going. On. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lots of reveals. Oh, and once again. This but it was, wasn't uh, literally like it wasn't literally like Hunter and Ally showed up and like, hey Tess, we're a couple now. <laughs> that would be yeah. weird. Yeah, no, like, I'm looking at was... the dog. Like obviously they care about uh, uh, Tess. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say shout out to Jace because like this. Oh my god, there's so many edits that uh, he added that just makes this episode so good. Awesome. Like, a lot of the uh, Hunter's dialogue and the Villains Alliance dialogue. It's like oh, it's so mm. good. Yeah. Uh, because, yeah, no, the stuff about the texting and all that stuff, that, that is that is all him. It's like, ah, oh, so good. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, no, Hunt has seen. There you go. Hope you're happy. Mm. Yay! And that proves that even if I don't yeah. like certain pairings, you know, for the sake of the writing, I'm going to let my personal biases aside. <laughs> um, I, I do like Hunter and Tess as friends. I love that so much. Um, yeah, platonic Hunter and Tess is good. Yeah. Great. Oh, there you go, but... <laughs> There you go. For the shippers, there you go. Throwing you guys a bone. Yay. Hope you're happy. I'm gonna read into this so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Tam, I already know you read into the whole Yule smile and uh, James oh, gone. Oh, yeah. Stuff. This is like expected. <laughs> uh, I'm acting like I control it. I don't control it at all. Jared controls it. <laughs> oh, exactly. It's the final word. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. There we go. We, we really wanted... To, uh, have Hunter and Tess have a reunion, like, and we waited five episodes, and here it is. There you I go. Know. It's payoff. Oh yeah. Yes. I might have to wait sixteen more for. An- <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, there's some stuff oh, that you're be waiting a very long time for. Yeah. Um... Sixteen more, actually, because two per family. Um, yeah, there's a lot yeah. of stuff that you'll be waiting a lot for. Hold but um, on. I know. Basically, what happens here is um. Connor gives the flag to Rhea, and then Rhea's running alongside Fiore, which is the most <laughs> unlikely combination of people I expected, to be honest. Um, but basically, um, Fiore is um, Fiore asks Rhea 
to uh, let her win, basically. And Rhea's like, why the hell should I do that? And um, <laughs> and basically, um, Fiore updates Rhea on what happened with um, the Villains Alliance. Um, or basically, like, like, the whole vote out thing. Um, or, like, Miriam... Words. I can't. <laughs> um, the... Or basically the whole uh, Miriam sending out a letter to the other teams, um, which is what happened, basically informing about the Villains Alliance. And um, what Fiore is saying is there's a mole on the other team. There's a there's a there's the traitor. There's the um, there's the zero among the team. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's basically <laughs> working God against. God damn it! Just got your reference. God damn it. <laughs> 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 But yeah, mm-hmm. Connor kind of reminds me of Ace, so that does make sense. Yeah, no. <laughs> Fiore basically asks, like, "Hey, can you can you please just let me win?" And Rhea's like, "Nah, nah, bro." <laughs> so, um, Rhea runs <laughs> ahead, and gets the win. Um, and <laughs> I love Fiore's uh, line at the end, where she's basically like, "What's even the point of this stupid, <laughs> bruh, bruh." <laughs> Stupid alliance. I, I don't know. It, it ties into the fact that even though it's an alliance, they are villains, and so they're not really. <laughs> they're of course not going to like. <laughs> wherever they can step outside the boundaries of the the alliance, they absolutely will. <laughs> um. So yeah. 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 It's pretty yeah. loose. It gets put aside when they want to win something for their own team, when they want to <laughs> be safe. <laughs> yeah. I, I just love how different all six of these villains are. Like, they all have different motivations and all that. It's great. Exactly. I love it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great. And it's interesting um, that uh, the yellow team don't know um, that the other teams know about the Villains Alliance. They don't know about the letter. So, like, Rhea didn't know uh, about the the okay. Miriam letter that got passed to Cyan and Magenta. Mm-hmm. And the, Fiore is the one to um, spread that. And then I think later in the episode, Fiore, uh, Rhea shares that with the rest of her team, like, with the yellow team, like, guys, the the other t- two teams know about the Villains Alliance. Yeah. Which yeah. is, uh, a development. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Um, I also personally love how Rhea is kind of working on a dramatic irony in two different ways, wherein uh, the audience knows she voted Yule, but Connor doesn't, and here she doesn't know who sent the letter, uh, that being Connor. I, I feel like DC doesn't really do dramatic irony other than, you know, very basic stuff. So here it's like, ooh, mm-hmm. we're getting into it. Yeah. Ooh. We know, we know stuff the audience doesn't. We, we know that, stuff the characters don't. That's spicy. Mm-hmm. That's spicy for real. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, Raya, Raya and the dramatic irony. Okay. Yeah. I love that. Raya. <laughs> ooh. Raya. Raya. Like, I, I know I'm just talking about, like, the bare minimum, like, writing devices, but like, a lot of them have been missing from the past DC season. I didn't notice right. that. To be fair, I didn't Me notice too, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we, we, we know what might happen in the future. <laughs> yeah. Conflict's brewing. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Gabby is like, I'm like a bullet train! Boom! Just runs. <laughs> so cute! Um, <laughs> <laughs> a little quick, fast also, moment. <laughs> also, can I expect the DC one? Because the Gretchen is like, I love to walk, and it's proven as she loves to walk and win <laughs> yeah um so we're about to end the challenge here uh Rio wins first place she gets a shower for the team um so to anyone who want another shower scene there you go um, <laughs> oh my god, god. There you go. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, gabby overtakes fiore gabby gets second place and fiore uh, loses from magenta team um uh, very sad now, interestingly enough, there is no strategy scene here. We just cut to five confessionals of the five magenta people, uh, bef- and then the elimination. And I, I, I want to ask you guys: Do you guys like that choice? Because me and uh, me and Vi really like that choice, especially because I, you know, let's be honest, Hunter being booted was kind of obvious. <laughs> I <laughs> right. don't mind right? if it's an obvious vote, but like if it's a complicated vote, I want the life after scenes. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think it was. I agree that the conversations after the the post challenge conversation um, was getting a bit repetitive in how it determined the uh, the elimination because that happens in episode three where 
uh, they're like, all right, we get, we're going to have to make a choice or whatever. Tom and Aiden are like going off on their separate way. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in the f- episode four, the, like the, the Miriam thing happens. So with this one, I like that. And I agree that it is obvious because um, Jake and Ashley are like, well, we finally have an opportunity to get rid of Fiore, but we kind of need Fiore. Um, we kind of need to get rid of Hunter if we're going to survive, because if we get rid of Fiore, then um, we're going to be, we have, we stand a chance of being um, of being enemies with Hunter and Allie. And so, yeah, you can, <laughs> you can kind of tell that um, Hunter Alley's going down, yeah. And Hunter, Hunter, um, he, he specifically, he, he, he just says like, oh, I hope our team realizes who really needs to go. Because Fiora has won, <laughs> uh, has lost a couple challenges for the Magenta team. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, it's a uh, fairly predictable uh, elimination, I suppose, but it's still pretty satisfying and dramatic. Yeah. Yeah. What do you guys think about the. I like the confessionals. I like how it's like every character in the team as well. Great. <laughs> yeah. Everyone gets their say. I'd agree too. <laughs> Even though like I'm a proofreader, I was <laughs> I was in shock after the episode ended. I was like, "Oh my god, what happened with the votes? Uh, it was going so good." <laughs> but <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> but <laughs> I like how it like uh... it makes you like like go back and look at like the context clues and stuff and like how all these yeah. like confessionals add up in the end and look at the big picture like Ashley said. So, I thought that was cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah this was- I like how the writing is different for each of the characters as well. Like, Jake and Ashley basically say the same thing, but they say it yeah. in different ways. Exactly. All of the characters talk in their, their own way, which is great. Yeah. Yeah. I think Yellow Team has the best dynamics, but Magenta has the most, like, individual uh, perspectives, I guess. Individual yeah. uh, character Agreed. moments. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, all science is science. Science is like (laughs) science, like the team that just looks pretty. Like (laughs) they're just there for the looks. It's like an aesthetic. Science is just like two groups who don't like each other. Right. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Tess in the middle. (laughs) This is like us around. Area looks better. So uh, at this point, it's tradition. At this point, but uh, why don't someone read the votes? Uh, Tam, why don't you be Crystal for this episode? Oh my god. Let's go. Okay. Tam, you ready? We've yeah. Done we've done this because uh, Paul was the uh, the guest in episode three, and we've just done it ever since, so why not? Give <laughs> <laughs> me a tradition now. Okay. Um, sorry, Paul, in advance. Um, okay. Oh my god. You got this. <laughs> I'm not even going to try. Okay. Once the votes are read, the decision is final. The person voted out must leave the game immediately. First vote, Fiore. Uh, does she say second vote? I can't. I'm reading the script. Yeah, I'm guessing so. Okay. Uh, no, she doesn't. Wow. She yeah, she doesn't. Okay. That's crazy. Okay. Um, Fiore. <laughs> Hunter. Hunter. Yo, who could that be? That wasn't me. I didn't volunteer. <laughs> yeehaw. <laughs> yeehaw. Not the yeehaw. <laughs> oh my god. What are you talking about? I didn't vote for Hunter. <laughs> That's, I, I can't. No, I'm not. I, we're moving on. <laughs> <laughs> That's two votes, Hunter. Two votes for your aim. One vote left. Fourth person voted out from Disventure Camp. Hunter. Oh. No, so close to the beginning. <laughs> no, Hunter. Meanwhile, uh, Fiore is like, "Yes, praise the Lord! Oh my God, Jesus in heaven, you saved me." That was a funny uh, line. Fun fact: I actually, I, I get the line, "Wow, there's no freaking way," and then the the description is really surprised. I'm like. I'm not delivering that in an overdramatic kind of way, you know? I'm not being like, um, 
no yeah you know I, i'm not doing i'm not doing the no so close to the end uh again you've <laughs> I, already got that okay? i love that decision. we've already got yeah. a, a, a an over dramatic hunter um reaction to getting eliminated and yeah. so with this one i think it, i thought it made so much sense for him to just be kind of pissed right yeah, yeah he's like oh, for it. So, yeah yeah and so my only deliveries for that line were him just being like wow honestly guys God. um because yeah, I, I, I feel like that was the only way it could work. <laughs> it's a great contrast from uh, <laughs> right. No, no. <laughs> to just like accepting it in a. It's great. Seriously, yeah. yeah. I feel like Hunter would have seen it coming a little bit to himself. Like, mm. I don't know. Maybe, he but tried, he's still but thinking really. strategically. He's like, "Do you just hate winning challenges?" Right. It's like. <laughs> Buddy, that's not like their priority right now. Exactly. It's like they're not thinking like in terms of winning challenges. Yeah. They need to get you out of there. Like yeah. maybe that was the death of him was he was thinking too much about strategy and not about uh, kind of the basic relationship. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Strategy bro hunter is back. I know. I was reminded of episode. Only here for five episodes. <laughs> I was yeah, reminded no, I, of episode I, I, I one from DC two. I was like, "Oh, okay." It was nice to have him back, <laughs> right? <laughs> Even if it was only for five episodes, but um, <laughs> and also he was fighting the whole time. But you know, regardless, um, <laughs> um, this this ending scene was really. I don't know about you guys. I thought it was really cute, especially because the original draft is Hunter saying, "I'm uncomfortable," oh. <laughs> and uh. <laughs> Hunter being like, Ali's like, no, what do I do? And Hunter's like, you'll, you'll figure something out. All right, bye. <laughs> it's like, what? Oh, oh that's my how God. Wait, Come on. That's, that's yeah, Hunter's, like, like, bus drive? What? What? Huh? What? I was like, what? that Hunter's, like, final, like, bus drive, like, scene. Just, like, figure it out. Like, that kind of delivery. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It was kind of like... Well, I don't think they show Hunter, Hunter getting on the bus, either. Well, I don't think they did. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Um, what do they do, like, after the hug? But like, they don't, like, show them and give you other lemonade. Yeah, so we we, we uh we were like, come on. So we made Hunter a lot more uh, positive into this uh, mm -hmm. this last interaction. You know? Yeah. You know, mm. it's not over till it's over. Keep fighting. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I wonder why... I like that guy. I'm like, the alley I know wouldn't give up on a game like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's great. Little, uh, little, little nice moment of the two. Now that now that uh, there's less tension in the game because you know one of them's literally out now. <laughs> right. Yes. So, yeah. They like put aside their what they were arguing about, um, and they're yeah. just like you know it's it's sad that you're you're gone, you know, which is great. I like that they 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 can still you know talk to each other um, like civilly, I guess. Right. Yeah. They can still, yeah. they still have a connection uh, underneath all of the, the the problems that they have. Yeah. 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 I like that. I've been saying this moment. all season long, but you know, I mean, couples do fight sometimes. That's just normal, and yeah, sometimes it doesn't need to get that nasty, but it, it happens. You know, we can still be civil. Yeah. We can agree to disagree. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was cute. So that's the end of the. Oh wait, nope, not yet. Uh, oh. Emily throws a stick at Yule, and that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you dropped my. Yule Emily stick. pokes Yule's eye out. <laughs> you no one hear Yule be like, "What do you want?" No one hear Yule. Oh god. <laughs> I'm so mad by again. now. Like. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um... You dropped my Yule stick. That is the funniest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god. You that's dropped a... my Yule stick. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my god I I don't even know what to really say about this Other than it's really funny that it's in the trailer And people are theorizing who threw the stick at you <laughs> It ended up being the post credit scene basically <laughs> And it was Emily It's kind of funny God. Yeah, it's funny, like nothing really happens It's just like, oh, they <laughs> They know each other, maybe. What's going on? <laughs> the stick throwing at you is like, a, there's so many theories. Like, oh, the wind did it. Oh, Rhea did it. God. <laughs> yeah. Imagine that, That's the first scene in the episode, a stick lands on Yule's head, and he's like, man, it's really windy out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the, 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 the most boring round. 
Um, <laughs> so yeah, no, that's episode five. It's one hell of a great episode. Mm-hmm. Lots of uh, lots of stuff happens. Lots of conflict. Uh, mm. so, yeah. so without further ado, guys, why don't we get into the MVP LVP session section of the uh, the podcast? Yes. Um, okay. Alright, Janice, we know we want to put Ashley, so there's no debate. No, you can better know. All yep. right, I'm not, I'm not putting <laughs> her. <laughs> her. <laughs> her. I'm not putting her. Um, okay, we're starting with LVP though, right? So, um, the yeah, LVP because we got to add a positive message in the end. That's the whole point. <laughs> um. <laughs> Well, I'll I have take the low blow on, or I'll take I'll take the easy pickings on this one. Um, Yule, for <laughs> you know why. Uh, it must, yeah. yeah, it must be. <laughs> you want to add on to your reasons Rhea, for Rhea. Rhea? I was originally gonna do Rhea, but Rhea would have been a little. Too I know you were originally gonna do Rhea. Yo. Yeah. <laughs> um, Rhea's taken L after L, but I think oh. one L was like the biggest. So, um, I'm just gonna go with Yule on this one. Sorry, Yule. Um, I'll go next because I'm just I'm just agreeing with Genesis. Um, I Gosh. I think that Yule kind of has to be the LVP. I don't think there's anyone else that really did anything too bad this episode. I mean, he called Gret Thunder Thighs. He insulted Hunter for like really no reason. <laughs> um, like that's like one of the few people that worked with you in the past. You could have like do that. Like, come on. Um, right. <laughs> Unnecessarily mean to his girlfriend. He had a stick thrown at him. <laughs> <laughs> He's accusing Connor, even though it wasn't Connor. Like, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Dang. I think it has to be you. Like, uh, when you put it that way. It's not to say. It's not to say God. he's a. He's you know. Um, it's not like frustrating. Like you know, like, sometimes Jake can be frustrating with his strategy and all that. But no, <laughs> this is like intentionally him being painted in a negative light. And I think yeah, he has to be LVP because of it. So. <laughs> Oh my god, is it gonna be unanimous? <laughs> Yo. Yeah, like we're thinking like it's so funny right now. For real? It's like Tam and I, we had like two people and one of them was you. <laughs> so it's like Yeah. Should we just book with the other person and then like to switch things up or should we keep with the flow? God, I it, don't... it really depends. Yeah. I mean if we were gonna have like the podcast first ever unanimous vote, that'd be interesting. <laughs> god. I, can't, would be I can't do it. I can't do it. It's okay, Tam. No one will judge you, like <laughs> hey, Yul is kind of rude, but he, he, he did a good job being rude. For real. Like, he made fun of Hunter pretty good. He did like, a good job being rude. <laughs> <laughs> like, within really? his character, he, he did the essentials. <laughs> yeah. True, yeah. Okay. He was very Yul. Yeah, very oh, I'm going to give this. Mm-hmm. Alright, so because this character does nothing, I might have to do them, and it's going <laughs> to be so painful because I always wanted to put them as MVP, but now I got to put them as LVP. I got to say. Alec. He I, is. Like, I love what? Alec. He did not say that one line. I what, swear he did not Weren't you the guy last episode that was like, I don't like it when we put characters just because they do nothing? Oh yeah, I did do that actually. Oh. Let me go. Oh, shoot. I'm thinking, it's hard. Way, I, don't think we've, I don't think we've done that at all this uh this this uh, series. Where oh. we, uh, I did it with Greg actually. Lack of screen time. There we go. But yeah, I definitely think, yeah, that's actually a good point. I shouldn't do screen time. But yeah, I'm looking at it. I was thinking Yolo just because objectively really add character like we know he's a fafo but we know like he um also hates hunter like it's like okay it's like what two scenes like arguing with connor we already saw that already like i feel like you'll just i think it's awesome and then he's in a toxic light <laughs> and it he just he can't give i can't like if i defended them like i gave him mvp last episode so. I think now he got his flowers. Now he can go get thrown tomatoes at, and I'm just gonna let him go out to the gutter. <laughs> wow, me, Genesis, and Emer agree on something for once. Yeah. I know. <laughs> oh dang! All right, <laughs> we do JMO next, and then like build up Tam. Yeah, we'll, we'll save. Uh, we'll save Tam for last. JMO, what do you think? <laughs> Wait, uh, Gabby doesn't really do anything in this episode. That she's in one scene, and in that scene, it's just at the start where she like sides with Ellie. Um. So. Uh, comes that. back from the end though in the challenge <laughs> does she oh yeah oh yeah, actually no that that one speed. moment um where she yeah where she's speed that that uh redeems gabby gabby's not going to be my lvp um that's going to be gret i guess because i just think that um i mean gret just it, it's kind of i mean i i think it's good that i think it's good that she um 
has that little confessional afterwards where she's like, you know, that did hurt my feelings. It's good that um, Odd Nation is writing like that now, where if Yule says something that is genuinely mean, then you see that it hurts another character's feelings, you know? you, you Like, it's there for a purpose. Um, and um, that is, like, acknowledge that, you know, Yule's a bad person or whatever. Um, but yeah, Gret is uh, stuck in a bad relationship, and that's, um, I guess... <laughs> the grounds to make a LVP? I don't know. I don't know. Like, I think this is some of better Gret stuff because when you look at that episode, she's like a burger. Like this one, like they at least gave her like a confession on you, so that's why I couldn't give her LVP yet because they actually are Gret, even though it's kind of like still slow. There is like work, which is like you know I'm I get sensitive when you mention stuff like this. Like, there is, like, still, like, substance worth of Gret's content, but I do understand your point of view when you look at the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. You see very little from her at the moment because she hasn't, like, really had a voice yet. She's been, like, more of a reactionary type person. Yeah, she hasn't really yeah, uh, made the mark in any particular way. And that would be because she doesn't really fit in with the, the yellow team. Um, but, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's hard to give a character LVP. Um, yeah, it is an easy... Yeah. It takes hard work. Because... And I, I do like the, the Gret scene. I think it's it's good for what it is, what the context is. Yeah. I just think that Gret is just, um, you know, she, she's not got a lot going on. And it's just like the the same kind of scenes over the past couple of episodes. Like, Yule yeah. is a dick. And then Gret's like, yeah, you shouldn't really, um, you know, be such a dick. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's true. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and Neil's like, don't tell me yeah. what to do. <laughs> hmm. It looks like Tam is in charge of deciding if the LVPs for this episode will be Gruel. Oh my god, Gruel. <laughs> that oh, would be Tam. funny. It <laughs> would be, oh my god. Oh, I can't do it. Alright, Tam. Yo. Who is your LVP of this episode? Okay. My, my... Reveal to us. Yo, okay, I was debating on so many people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... same. <laughs> My line of reasoning is kind of similar, but like I think I might have to, I have to be quirky a little bit and like choose Fiore. I think. Sorry. What? Yeah. Mm. I know. It's just like, in hindsight, I don't know. She's just like, even though she's making it this far, like she's just been so pathetic, and I. Just... <laughs> that's uh, yeah. I, I I can see that actually. Yeah, like, that one I she's agree. just kind of like Tam's right. Like she doesn't have much. She doesn't have like it's not like I guess season one where she right um is really going into it with uh something going on. But here she's she's just kind of like there and is just kind of being herself, reacting to everything. Exactly. Uh, like man, I got to stay in the game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's really starting to feel just like a hopeless kid, like what she really is so <laughs> yes yeah, her dad's not right. here i know <laughs> i don't know I, I, I can't give uh uh fury the lowest just because like she survived a vote you know i know but she did but like i get tam's point of view yeah oh so, i'm gonna like, uh... do you want to go more on to it i do understand what you're um yeah yeah i don't know <laughs> that's pretty much it Cause oh. I can't, I can't pick anybody else for LV. I get that. It's hard because mm-hmm. when there's so many great characters, and it's like, you gotta pick which one was like the least. I like the which one wasn't as great as the rest, and that's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's gotta be Alec. It wasn't in the episode. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. like, it's not his um, fault. <laughs> right. Yeah, he's had like three pretty major episodes in a row. Exactly. Um, I think, yeah. He's very. I'm gonna say this now. This is a uh, not a. Sp- it's more of a meta spoiler. But um, Jared did the math of all the lines, and Tess in episode two and Alec in episode five are the only times where a character is severely underedited. Like there are no other times where someone mm-hmm. has like less than ten lines for the rest of the season. Mm-hmm. What a cool final two! <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did like Ugh. everyone's lines, and it's like yeah, those are the only two that are underedited for a uh, certain episode. I don't know. That'd be weird if they yeah. that was the final two, you know. That is really yeah. cool though that every character well, the thing has. Is, a would never point that out. That was the team. final two though, like. Dang. Yeah, no. We need to play mind sure, game. Sure to, uh, not 
invisibilize anyone, you know, yeah. this time around. Well, except that's... for those two in those two episodes. <laughs> yeah. That's like, interesting, a lot of fans but it now... works. It works. Yeah, a lot of fans are not receptive to the visible edit, because we saw it with Jane, we saw it with Miriam. Like, anyone who has a lack of... They still have, like, significant plot. Or people, people usually tend to... Because then they're always... They're usually right, because, like, you notice these little shifts that, like, how Jared and Robert love that. They don't want someone a winner that's always on the screen. They want a winner that's, like, kind of, like, forgettable, but, like, as significant. Right. Exactly. There always yeah. could be time to change the meta. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm looking at the next few episodes. It's like no one has less than ten lines. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's wrap this up with the MVP. So who wants to go first? Who will be the who? Who wants to start? I hope that uh, we all put, mm. you know, one member of a certain trio. But I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, what if I feel like putting Rhea again? I'm joking. <laughs> no. no. I'm, I'm joking. I'm not. I'm, Do it. Do it. <laughs> it'd be so funny, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> all right, Jenny Benny, you want to start us off? You want to put um, your, love, your love again as MVP? No, he won't. Not, he will never. I'm not putting her. He's not. I'm not doing it. Um, <laughs> she didn't really do anything MVP worthy anyway. Um, <laughs> she played diving platform sim. Oh. oh. She jumped. Anyway, yeah. so MVP is <laughs> probably gonna be... You know what? Since I'm first, I get to take the... I take. I get to take the golden fruit here. I'm gonna I'm a pick Allie. <gasps> oh! <gasps> no, JPEG died. Oh my god! Stole his woman. <laughs> I feel like I feel like no. that's the most obvious pick. <laughs> I feel like it's the most obvious pick because, like, you know, people were pining or people were like really hoping for Ali to have more, and then this is the episode where you—I mean, she already had some. But this is like where you really, really see it, and it comes out, and it's really good. And I was downing popcorn all the way while watching it. <laughs> and, um, yeah, because Allie shares scenes with Ashley. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wait, hang on. Okay, all right. Yeah, I was gonna have to literally put up in it. <laughs> uh, you can't put Ashley, so you're putting <laughs> the closest thing adjacent. <laughs> I want to breathe the air with her. <laughs> Well, okay, but but you know, I think I think she did great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My choice is Hunter. Yeah. This was. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Love triangle sweep. Let's do the trio. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I think that Hunter. Um. This was his episode. And this is where things finally come to a head for him. So, um, and then we really got to see from his perspective. Um, and I feel like he had a lot of good conversations with uh, Tess and Ali um, and Jake, too. Oh, yeah, Jake. Oh, shoot. And Yule. <laughs> oh, <laughs> This is, yeah. a lot, oh, that one, that one is, this yeah. is a lot of goodies. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's my reasoning. I I think Hunter was really involved in this episode, and um, it made for a good elimination episode for him too. So yeah, yeah. carried I, it. I kind of want to watch DC two episode three and DC uh, three episode five <laughs> like back to back, the two Hunter episodes. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. See the. Uh, Evolution, or so some might say de-evolution, but I disagree. <laughs> of the character. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I know. There's a deep contrast. Oh my god. But I don't yeah. know if I can ever watch all those like kisses again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. Okay, yeah, I forgot that was that episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, god. I forgot. Oh, no. <laughs> right. Go next, because I want to see the other two for last. So I was debating between two people. I have decided. Person I was so close to put in was us, but I have to give my MVP to Hunter this episode. Yeah. Hunter checked all the boxes that I wanted that, to give him out, and this is star episode. If I was to not put him as MVP, that'd be very out of me. I have to really just pay like respect because this episode was m made for Hunter and gave him like. First of all, he was his debate. Like we always saw, like Hunter having like good points, but just didn't know how to express it. This is the first time we see Hunter express it. Right? 
I think that's something I've been craving for. And it's like when you see it happen, mm-hmm. and the episode is just amazingly well done. And to just see that conversation with right. the show hunters, like s- sincerity reality, like he hasn't like given up on her. He's like, he wants what's best for her, but she's just very stuck on things. And we see that frustration spelt out very well. And to his strategy with the whole challenge thing gets a little annoying, but I think it fits within the narrative being set and it's consistent to the writing and done well and better. Cause we see Hunter actively try to go talk to Jake all about Allie. She only talks to like Fiore trying to swing, but she doesn't talk about the other people, but we see Hunter try to talk to everyone. I think that's just like something that has to be regarded. Mm. And Ted, he even has yeah. like some funny scenes, like he crashes his bike, like all that. <laughs> like, guy. Yeah. It's, it was a simple guy. Like, Aww. And he gave like that amazing speech in the end. And I think that's just he just has so much content. Like I just think that is enough justifying for an MVP for me. God damn it. Pop off. The reason I'm saying god damn it is because uh I'm I'm not gonna pick my girl, sadly, so no. I'm, I'm worried my girl's gonna get snubbed. Oh my I really was Whoa. close to picking You're not no gonna do not. The trio? <laughs> No, Damn. no, I, I, I want to, but okay. I just, there's someone who's better. There's just someone who's better. Who are you going uh, for? Uh, who was it? It's hard. Uh, mm. I, I hate being obvious, but I'm going to have to give it to Hunter. Um, <gasps> and I know okay. this is very rich coming mm-hmm. from me. I'm someone who's very, very critical of Hunter. <laughs> so, <laughs> in my many tweets. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've but seen like, them all. <laughs> um, <laughs> as someone who's just been very critical of the character in the past, it's just... To see him finally be layered and have this perspective, and I know a lot of people say he got derailed, he's got, he's very unlikable and all that, but you know, it, truth be told, sometimes we get stressed out. You know, sometimes we um, have moments where we lose our judgment, and there are moments here and there in the episode, whether it's through Tess or his last scene with Ali, where it's shown that no, he's still that same well-intentioned guy. It's just he got stressed. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, we are only five episodes into this twenty-one episode season, so there's still a lot more to go, but. I don't know, for finally being the character that I feel like he really should have been in DC2, where he's very layered, very complex. I have to give it to my guy, Hunter. Um, this is the second time I've done it this season. <laughs> Yo, so, it is? Oh my god. Everyone, everyone's freaking out. They're like, JPEG, what the fuck? Give Yo. Hunter two MVPs? What the hell? <laughs> fine. You love him. Respecter. You love him. That's my arc. That's my arc. I like Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> you love Hunter. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, this is the first time where I'm like, yeah, this is... He, He's finally like a very strong character, and it's sad that he's gone. But hey, season season goes on. <laughs> There's still more mm. to come. Yep. All right, Jmo. Mm. Nice one. Out. It's me. Oh, Way. All right. <laughs> See, this is good. This works out well because, like, um, I, I kind of want to pick Hunter. I don't know if I should pick Hunter though. Um, <laughs> you fine, whatever you want. No one's gonna judge you. <laughs> For if, real. Uh, if, if you, yeah, uh, yeah. Because I feel like we've again. said. If you're the VA. You get to pick two. You get to pick two. That you're not. You don't look bad. <laughs> It's a big two. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm down for that. Yeah, I think it's been said why Hunter is good in this episode because <laughs> he, you know, gets a he gets a lot to do. Um, he gets uh, some development, some focus that um, I suppose he didn't in the last couple of episodes, and so you really get to get some clarity on his situation with Ali. Um, I really like that. Um, I was gonna pick Tess though because. Um, <gasps> Yeah, I will, I, because I thought you guys would pick Hunter. Um, and anyway, I really like Tess in this episode. Yay! Um, I would have picked Tess maybe uh, for episode three as well, just for the the scene where Lake gets voted out, and that just for the fact that she made that decision um, and is working with her team. Uh, I really like Tess this season, man. Um, yeah. And yeah. I think she's great in this episode, uh, when she, the way she talks to, to Gabby. Um uh, I'm, I'm skimming through, uh, but I guess there's like the the chicken scene at the start as well. That's great. Just all of Tess's interactions are great. Um, just the way that she stands up for the people that she cares about. Um, she's like such a great presence in this season. I feel like um, she's a, she does amazing things for her, her team um, in terms of making that that dynamic and that conflict within her team really come alive um because otherwise it would be you know two um just two opposing heads basically um with the fact that ellie and tom really don't like each other so tess being there makes it so much more interesting and uh um 
So that's why Tess is my second favorite character in this episode. My favorite, obviously, is Connor because I like that he <laughs> left the letters out um, from, Wait, from Miriam. <laughs> <That's not laughs> <as expected>. <laughs> <laughs> Connor did a good thing, and I respect him for that. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> but he he doesn't say anything for the rest of the episode, so um, I'm actually getting over Tess. <laughs> oh, <laughs> amazing! Wow, I got double blinds. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. That was awesome. Good job, James. Yeah. <laughs> double blind side. Heck yeah! I love Triangle finally get an episode to, the, to themselves. Aw. Ah, uh, the redemption uh, arc. And uh, yeah, it might, mm. it might not even. It might not be the last one. That's all I'm gonna say. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> too, and love Triangle fans. There might be something. <laughs> And I don't know. I'm a fan, so hey, you know. Now that I think about it, maybe that's why I like episode five so much. <laughs> maybe I'm <just> really biased. <laughs> um, pretty good. But yeah, I think that's all for now, guys. Um, donate some cameos to the voice actors if you have the money. Of course, it's pretty expensive. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm happy to do cameos. Right. <laughs> yes. And I'm sure. Do you, uh, is Kai doing cameos? I'll get a Kai cameo. Uh, no. Oh. Sadly, there's no. The non All Stars don't get cameos so far. That no. Oh, no, I, yeah, they I guess that's all for now, guys. So we'll see you guys uh, next time we see you. Goodbye. Bye. Awesome. Bye. 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 Um, Genesis that. loves Ashley. He cannot convince us otherwise. I was bring waiting for that reference. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. <laughs> but... <laughs> Tam was actually the one who suggested that. That's like, so funny. I love one. that. Yeah, Tam was the one who suggested that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know it's still like very like it, it's it's still subtle, but it's like it was supposed to be like even more subtle. It was like no one's gonna pick up on that. We gotta make it a bit more obvious as to what hunters refer to. <laughs> I respect it. I respect it. Nice job, Tam. Oh, wait, oh. No, sorry, sorry, it was Jason. Wait, sorry, it was Jason. I'm sorry. Oh, it wasn't even Tam. oh. <laughs> my bad. Wait. Oh my god, poor what? Tam. Let me. <laughs> no, it was Jason. I'm like. Yeah, go to the dock. Like... Hold up. Let me Tam. let me look in this. Uh oh. Damn. That's crazy. I thought that. Wait, was it me? It wasn't. Sure, don't rely on me, cause Tam's just I gonna go on the it. Discord. She's like, I'm gonna check. Maybe I said in the Discord, but maybe not. Like, right. Like, so, Hold up. Um, I hope I didn't claim this. Wait. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> Stealing chases. <laughs> Smiley. Oh my yeah. god. But um. Uh, uh, that was an intentional callback to the uh the crying kids online or whatever. That was my season. line. No, it wasn't. It was my no, line. No, said it was her line. Look at the doc. <laughs> it's, it's it's mine. JPEG can't read the doc. That's not the <laughs> right line. <laughs> oh. It's like you're oh, one no, to you talk. Added, like you're one to talk. Oh, yeah. you're one to talk is yours. Okay. Yeah. Okay, there we no, go. Was, I'm sorry. I apologize later in the po earlier in the podcast I said it was Jason's. <laughs> but it was Tam's. Just yeah, like a word <laughs> caption right when it said that it's actually Tam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, edited Sling Jason. from a woman. Oh my god. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it, but since it's an audio format, no one's gonna see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, did the alley line make it too? I forget the what Chase said. Uh, oh, wait, no. no. You're a grown man. No, that that one's there. Yeah, that was there. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, so that was his. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. We didn't just get close to the end. We <laughs> got to the end. <laughs>